current right. meta. And it is time to move into picks and bans for game number one between Samsung Galaxy and the generic Green Wings. And there's the Ezreal ban starting things off. Wow, bans going fast and furious today. Rise, Rek'Sai, Azir, Nar. And what's the final ban going to be? The Azir ban coming in against Crown. That's not very surprising. Braum will be actually banned. So Braum has been climbing from red side first pick status to blue side first pick status to now red side ban. It's been a pretty meteoric rise for Braum, and he's just, he's so good right now. Yeah. So Callista is left up for Fury. That is kind of a scary prospect, actually. Well, I mean, if you give a team that's centered around a really good AD carry Callista, you're really kind of asking for trouble right off the bat. Only Maokai and Alistair locked in for Jin Air. They really want to make these picks work. And the, the Maokai, no surprise, Trace, Almost every game this season has played either Maokai or Rumble champions that don't need a lot of gold to be successful. Yeah. Looks like Gragas is going to be locked in for Eve, so just kind of ignoring the Nidalee completely. And they are going to pick up the Victor as well, too, so that makes a bit more sense. Crown has been playing it, but we've also seen it banned a lot against GBM. So it's a takeaway against Gang by Ma more than anything else, I think. Obviously a very strong pick, so I expect the Nidalee to come in here from Chaser. They do well on that champion. You can play the Twisted Fate into the victor if you want. GBM already has Teleport as his summoner, so I imagine we will see TF. Yeah, he was he was kind of hinting at it when we had that conversation a little bit earlier that he was planning on trying to play that one again today. And the summoners seem to suggest that. They're going to lock in the Nidalee and save that mid-pick for last, which is not too surprising. So Corky for Pilot, just one of those players who really likes these caster AD carries. And Janair. Classic Janair. They want to go for a, some sort of poke or kite composition with the Nidalee yep. and the Corky. Uh, they've used Victor in these comps. Obviously can't do that right now, but TF would also fit in nicely with what they've been running in the past. Now, Samsung, um, they need some... S well, they've got the they've got the Gragas for some nice engage. They may try and look for something just a little bit more. Right. Uh, Kuve likes to play Rumble. That would be appropriate here. He, uh, he likes to play Shen which would be a little bit more problematic, but maybe he can get in onto Gragas. Well, the Rengar would be a bit of a, a bit of a shock. And also, for what it's worth, Tom Kench is enabled this week. Doubt we'll see him before any buffs come in. And seeing Kuve take that Hecarim would Hec be not too surprising. He's played a lot of it. Hecarim's a good pick, but you have to be worried because he has no escape mechanisms. And it's the it's the Maokai Nidalee combo, which is just an incredibly easy gank to make. And Hecarim, most teams don't really play him anymore. He's fallen out of the meta a little bit because he is so item dependent. Mm -hmm. um, I know they wanted the the engage here with the Hecarim, and there's the TF, yep. so pretty obvious that that was coming. But when you have the Hecarim with the Janna, I would have gone, rather they had gone for something like Rumble Annie here, actually. Hmm. Uh, so that they have the engage from the support instead, and they have the rumble for the mid-game fights. Because TF, Nidalee, Maokai, it's going to take a miracle for Kuve to live through that gank. It's going to slow down his Trinity Force substantially, and that means that he's not going to be able to split push when the big Nidalee, TF, Corky siege starts in the mid-game. So I don't think Hecarim is really an ideal pick here for Samsung, uh, because it's just going to be so hard for him to live, uh, not only before the TF bolt comes through, but after, especially afterwards with GBM. And we've talked about this before with the teleport. It just allows TF to port right back to his mid lane turret to continue to wave clear. And it really is great for TF because he can push the turret up while the enemy mid is recalling, uh, because he can get back to lane instantly and then make a play. So it gives you a lot more room to make plays on TF when Victor cannot be on the map and therefore he can't affect any of the ganks. Yeah, very true. I'll see if Jinair has what it takes to take down Samsung here in the first game of our first best of three of the night. And Jinair really picking themselves into a comp too that sort of uh, supports more of that early game pressure. We'll see if they can bring it against Samsung Galaxy. It's time to get in the game and find out. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Samsung Galaxy. Taking on the Jin Air Green Wings. Playoff spots potentially on the line. 
Okay, so Kuve hasn't committed to an actual buy yet here. We'll see. He's going to start at a jungle camp, go back and buy something on top of his flask, I think, depending on which lane he ends up in. So waiting to see if there will be a lane swap before committing to an item purchase. Be normal for Hecarim players. And now we do have a bit of an invade men. coming in. Yeah, coming down for Jin Air. Trace all by his lonesome with his sapling in the top tri brush. Early ward by Luna, so they will be able to spot this. They'll see him in tri brush. And that's going to cause Samsung to uh, move into the top jungle and see if they can get some of their own, own wards down, I would imagine. Yep. So we will see a warding mission here to the bottom side. Probably just don't want to be in the same lane as Fury. Mm -hmm. Of course, that Callista is still quite scary in the laning phase. Oh, Fury just pretty scary all game long, too. Yeah, he definitely is. One of the better laning AD carries here and uh, can transition that well into the late game. We talked about how uh, this team, the Samsung team, is pretty dependent on him doing well. I mean, Jin Air, a very AD carry focused team too. Yeah. We will see. GBM looked so comfortable on this TF the last time we saw them bring it out. And you have to think Samsung was kind of expecting something like this may happen. Yeah, oh, you have to, but it's really hard to play against those those double globals. I mean, the last game right. that we saw, basically GBM would sometimes port to a lane with his ult, get a kill, and then IM would try and group mid to take mid turret, and he would just TP back to mid tier two, and then come and clear out the waves with wild cards, and they couldn't do anything, just standing there looking dumb. So it's, it's really hard to play against this. If you can get away with having the TF on, with the teleport to match up, if you're confident you don't need the igniter, the ghost, it's definitely a great way to go. Yeah. Pushing that lane up a little bit early gets a faster level two than crown, but it's probably not going to make too much of a difference. Yep. Lane swap comes through, so we're not going to see the Callista versus the Corky, and instead uh, we are actually just going to have a quick TP into the top lane. Yep. From the Maokai. So a TP down to bottom too from Kube, so both top laners are going to be without that for a little while. And Trace, it seems like he would spend a lot of time under that turret here. Yeah, he's got to be very careful about how he deals with this. Of course, we are on 513, so those Callista nerfs have come through. Maybe not so much of a priority ban anymore. We've seen it slip through just a little bit more here in Korea. Yeah, it really hasn't affected it too much yet. Not too much, no. We, we did see a couple of uh, Callista games from Spenu last year. But that seemed, uh, seemed okay for what it's worth. I mean, it was Spenu playing it, but then again, Nuclear is not a bad 80 carry. Definitely not. So taking a look right now, we do see the 4 and one win rate for Chaser, oftentimes banned against him. Teams are afraid of letting him have this in Italy. And frankly, yeah. I don't understand why anybody lets him have it, because if we just think about the way that Jin Air wins games, it's Chaser getting a huge mountain of money and then hitting you with a bunch of spears and all inning you on Italy and 1v1ing some of your other laners. So it's a bit of a dangerous situation, I feel. Maybe not exactly ideal. We are going to be heading into the Callista 1v1 versus the Maokai, and then the 2v2 on the bottom side of the map. We do see Eve kind of sticking around his top jungle right now. It'll be a little bit dangerous for Fury, but he's allowing himself to be pushed back, so it should be fine. Meanwhile, some action down in bot lane. Kube taking a lot of damage from this trade. Sweden Pilot really putting the hurt on Kube early on. Yeah, he has to be careful, but then again, he does, oh, wow. he has a mountain of potions. Yeah. Has a flask, went back after his uh, level one, and then bought some more pots. So he can, he can afford to lose some HP when it comes to actually CSing right here. Won't be the end of the world, and starting to heal up already. So it's going to be interesting. Here comes the first TP into the mid lane. So early back and buy from GBM, but you can back and buy at these timings. He's just going to go ahead and get a Doran's Ring and an Amp Tome right away. So the thing about this teleport is it just gives you so much flexibility as Chaser stands in a ward forever. Oh man, then he pinged right after that ward disappeared. So Whoops. now he's gonna think that they didn't see him at all, which they definitely did. <laughs> well, he's leaving bot lane for a while anyway. He's gonna go after the Scuttle Crab or the Rift Coward. Take your pick. Hiding under the water when it gets attacked. Yep, that's right. What a weakling. Even though we know it can't get killed, it's actually immortal. Isn't it sad to be 
an immortal coward? Well, that's, that's a, like the worst thing, right? Because well, he never actually dies. The real issue here is that what happens when that scuttle crab learns that it can't die? What happens when it becomes more self-aware and it's like, you know what? I can't die. I can just fight anybody. It Dude, doesn't matter how long it takes. Gonna go run around Baron. It's gonna become the new Baron, man. It's gonna become the most <laughs> season six change spoiler. Scuttle crab is the new Baron, guys. <laughs> That'd He's be hilarious, just ultra the scuttle powerful. crab in the Baron pit. That's right, you can't kill him. You can only just keep him at bay for a while. <laughs> and if the game goes too long, if it goes like 60 minutes, he comes out of the pit and just destroys both teams. It's called the anti-Ziggs strategy. <laughs> it's the anti-Ziggs mechanic in that's, the game. That's right. You need to, you need to have an anti-Ziggs mechanic, I think, to keep it from going too long. Or maybe we should just say anti-SKTS mechanic. <laughs> They're dead anyway. Well, well, long gone. Mostly. <laughs> well, that, that type of game from them anyway. GBM going to recall now. We'll see what he ends up finishing. And just kind of a farm fest early on, which is not too surprising. Just getting the Aether Wisp. Um, he is going to be able to walk into the mid lane. Now he has his ultimate up just in case he needs it. Eve will find a pink ward in mid and go ahead and clear that out. But he's had two shops while Victor has only had one. He is going to lose some CS as a result, but just kind of incrementally staying ahead of Victor. And this first recall from Crown, notice that they dropped a ward in the middle of the lane and also on the upper side by the Raptors, Samsung did right before this came out. So they knew that there was a possibility that GBM would be coming back into lane and looking for a topside teleport because that's the most likely place to gank. And here it comes. Oh boy. Uh, we'll see, yep, right on the Kuve. Kuve stopped up immediately. There's a gold card coming in. Can he get away? He's trying to run with that E, but they're just gonna dive. Trace his ult ends. GBM with another gold card. Can he finish him off? Chaser goes in for the first blood, and GBM barely escapes his life, or does he? Caster minions just can't quite take him down. He was sub 30 health there for a moment, but despite the craziness, gank number one from that TF pays off. Well, I mean, you just have to expect that is going to happen in this situation. So that is going to be the first kill. It does go on to Chaser, but. That was also not a very well executed gank because the idea here is that what they wanted to do was have Twisted Advance start, then the gold card, and have him stunned long enough for the Chaser's spear to go through. But it was a slight misjudgment on that. The spear ended up missing. If that spear had hit, there would be nothing close about that gank whatsoever. Right. Ended up being a bit hair raising, but that's okay. Well, it did cost him a blue buff as well, too. He was able to come over and hand that to Crown, I believe. Or uh, take it himself. No, he anyway. took it himself. Yeah. yeah, blue buff still up, and you know this Hecarim being held back is is going to be one of the major storylines of this game because the longer they can delay that power spike, the more powerful Jinair's mid game window is going to become with this Corky and this Twisted Fate. So this is why I didn't like the Hecarim pick here. You don't have any mobility summoners, which means it's even harder to get out of Maokai Twisted Fate Hell in the top lane. You know what I like to call Hecarim? Horse Riven. Because it's the same situation where if you if you're ahead, if you've gotten some kills, if you're doing okay, yeah, fine, that's great. You're gonna be you're gonna be awesome in team fights. But if you're not, you're gonna be pretty useless. You are so definitely going to be useless. Watch out for the horse riven pick. Horse riven, he even has a big sword. It's true. Like Riven does. He even like hops sometimes and swings it around. I do think that Riven players are generally more obnoxious than uh, That is true. Than Hecarim players though. So much more toxic. At According least, to official at least, statistics. At least they sometimes build tank items to help the team, <laughs> you know. That's pretty rare, man. I don't know. I don't know what server you're playing on. <laughs> Ravidus Hydra, yeah. Hecarim. It's like there must be some some like secret subreddit or Skype chat somewhere where all the Riven and Bane players of the world get together and think of ways to just play bad. <laughs> <laughs> they they think of convinced. new and exciting insults for their teammates. That's right. They they tried to invite the jungle master Yi, but he didn't get along with anyone, <laughs> so they kicked them all. Yeah. Even that's too much for the Riven players. That's right. Yeah. Jungle master Yi is too too far. It's really the lowest form of life. <laughs> Teleports smite master Yi. Oh. Don't get me started, Monte Cristo. Actually, I got me started. Don't get me started, <laughs> me. I'm just not I'm not contributing. I'm encouraging your rants, but not yeah. starting them. Don't continue encouraging what I've started. <laughs> oh, they found oh, Kuve. Geez. Kuve face checks the bush. He's going to ult over the wall and escape. But that is an ultimate down for a little while. Yep. 
just waiting right in the brush, trying to figure out where Chaser was. Well, they found him, and now Chaser's going to get a lot of free autos in on this top side. So Janair, you know, they're mixing it up. They're playing properly, I think, with the team compositions. They've identified where that weak point is. They're actually going for it right now. Trace is going to have a lot more money than he normally does this game because he's not being dove, he's not behind in CS, yeah. and he's going to get solo turret turret damage, so or okay. turret gold, rather. And they're trying to just zone GBM out so they can take a turret themselves. They were Smart. about a 1.5k gold ahead, but that lead is going to be cut quite substantially. A good response by Samsung just to take that mid lane turret, and that's going to make it a lot more difficult for GBM to find those ganks. He can't move up far, far enough in lane to, or in lane to get to the other lanes comfortably. Yep, Samsung identified that very well too. They knew what uh, Janir had to do and having that TF bottled up is very problematic. And Victor is such a high damage mid laner that if he is freed up like this to roam, we've seen what Faker can do with mid game Victor roams on the side lanes and it's, um, it's not pretty for yeah. the enemy team. Well, Samsung also claims the first dragon as well. So Jin Air, I mean, it was a promising early start with that gank, but things have not been too great since then. Well, they're still up in terms of gold. Uh, the Corky's up, uh, GBM's fallen a bit behind, but this team composition is still going to be entering the power spike in four to five minutes. And if we look at GBM, he already has the home guard boots too. There's a possibility that he can teleport flank with TF, which is also one of the more exciting ways to play Twisted Fate with this port because you can get into the back line without telegraphing that you're going to be back there. If we think about a normal TF ultimate, obviously teams have a few seconds to react to that to try and lay down some CC where he's coming in or hit him with some AOE. When he's just zooming in from the side from the fog of war, you don't have that same luxury of pre-planning yeah. where he's going to be coming from. And he doesn't have to get in the middle of the enemy team. He can stay on the flank and continue to threaten the back line with uh, gold cards and wild cards. So yeah, when we, we talk about GBM being the safe player, right? Which, which is true, but we both know this guy. We know deep down in his heart, he wants to be the guy making plays. <laughs> he wants to be the faker, well, killing everybody. To, to better or worse effect, obviously. <laughs> I mean, sometimes to it preferably works. preferably better. Uh, sometimes it works out for him, sometimes yeah. it doesn't. Um, but it's where his heart lies, though. He's got a bloodthirsty heart deep inside. Yeah, it definitely does. We've seen those big victor flanks. He's, if the rest of his team can initiate, sometimes he'll just do it for the hell of it. Here comes TP. Coming down. Yeah, they really want to secure this blue buff. TP coming in from Jin Air. Trace is there. Luna taking a lot of damage. He's going to get pulled out by the Fates call. There's a flash from Trace. Can he get close enough? Gold card is going to mean the Twisted Vance will land, and Fury is going to get taken out. And Jin Air with a nice catch there. That blue steel was a little bit too overambitious for Samsung. Yeah, they, well, they had the wards in, but they weren't respecting the double TP. Kuve didn't actually TP into that one, and they thought they had gotten away. Luna was flung out with the Fates call, but Kalista just couldn't get out of range in time when it came to GBM just porting in and the follow-up flash twisted advance from Trace. So, I mean, this composition is so good at creating picks. They've yeah. got a lot of burst damage right now. And that's a scary thing to deal with. Well, you know, what? you and I were talking about this earlier. A lot of the lowest teams in the league, as far as wins go, have some of the highest amounts of warding and ward clearing, but they just don't seem to be able to deal with it. You know, they don't seem to be able to use that vision to uh, win games. Well, make they, good plays. Yeah, it's true. They oftentimes have the information, but they fail to make the proper calls based on that information. Like you can see, Blue Buff was a threat right here, and they knew that there were two globals up, but still Kuve's not responding to that gank, and uh, you're facing a Jin Air team that is very comfortable in the early game, particularly right now. Pilot's in a very good position. Do you feel like that shows a bit of a, an immaturity as far as strategy goes on a team to be like, you know, we'll, we'll just throw a lot of wards on it, we'll be fine. We'll just have the vision, we'll be fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, it, it's just, they'll transition from not having wards to having wards but making the wrong decisions to hopefully having wards and making the right decisions. And right. We can definitely say Samsung has come a long way since the spring started this year when they had to start with that brand new slate after all of their players left at the end of 2014. Yeah, they are still a team very much in a rebuilding year. There's a knockup onto Sweet with a little bit of damage. He's got plenty of sustain, but yeah, you're right. I mean, Samsung, they've been making progress, and who knows what they'll look like next year. They've got a long way to go. Yeah, they do. So Samsung here 
up one dragon already, but they're not too far behind in terms of gold total. And actually, Kuve's done a good job of dealing with this laning phase. He died, but he's only behind six CS. Yeah. So he did get some extra farm as Jin Air was trying to make plays on the bottom side of the map. Well, Dragon is up in two minutes now, and Samsung already pushing down this bot turret, getting a lot of wards in, getting ready for it. They may lose their top tier two for it, though. Yeah, Chaser on the top side of the map, very interestingly right now, they're just deciding that they're going to go for a tier two at top and then a tier one in mid at the same time. I guess so. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Gate comes in, Kuve at about half health. He's going to regret it. GBM loads up that gold card, hits him during the ultimate. Can there be enough damage? Oh, he dodges the spear, and Kuve gets out. They're probably still going to get this turret, but Kuve once again evades death. They might not even get the turret with the health on... Uh, Chaser yeah, right now. That probably hmm. wasn't worth it. Uh, GBM maybe could have stayed mid and gotten it with that sheen if they had gone for the objectives instead. Hard to tell. I didn't see the mid tower HP right there. It was kind of, it means, it seemed like it was yet another situation where if that spear would have landed, they probably could have killed him. Right. And also the gold card was late. Uh, if he had yeah. hit Kuve before the Onslaught of Shadows came through, well then maybe we're talking about a situation where uh, the Nidalee is able to catch up with the Hecarim a little bit sooner, but it's not the way it was going to work. Yep. And so Samsung with a good amount of vision around the dragon as it draws closer. But can they use that to take a second one here? Yeah, not a lot of wards for Janair on the bottom side of the map, especially since Chaser was just on the top side, and he's been building uh, the warding totem right now instead of actually going for a sight stone so just rune uh rune glaive into rod of ages pretty normal for nidalee builds but it does mean that you're just going to have fundamentally fewer wards on the map gbm also upgrading his sweeper super early in this game for a mid laner and even though he finished his lich bane he doesn't have that many items yet particularly compared to crown so it's going to be hard for them to actually fight a 5v5 at the dragon especially with both the mid and bottom lane so far pushed up they're just going to give it up and see if they can take the tier two it looks like in top so samsung going up two dragons and this is certainly a bit nerve-wracking for Jin Air. Yeah, they have to be hitting this power spike now, but they're running a split push in a pick composition, so they just don't have the power because of the way that GBM is itemized to fight in a 5v5. Uh, Victor is just going to do way more damage in a team fight, and GBM is built to split push, put pressure on turrets with the Lich Bane, or create picks with his kind of single target burst. Yeah. Uh, Trinity Force picked up by Kuve now. That's a nice big buy for Samsung. Yeah, didn't get it too much later than Pilot either, so he really hasn't been held back. Kuve died once, but otherwise has avoided those ganks coming in from Jin Air. And we'll see, uh, Jin Air needs to start getting some more towers down. Yes, they still have a gold lead, but I would be very scared of Samsung's composition in the late game. That Hecarim is still a massive threat when it comes to damage on your back line, especially the Twisted Fate. Yeah. All right, bottom lane turret going to be taken by Jin Air, so they do at least tie things up in that regard. A little bit more gold for their team. They are still ahead by about 3,000 gold at the moment. Yeah, Trace on the run. He's underneath this turret, 2, but there's three people up here. Yeah, there's a slow. Are they going to actually dive this? Meanwhile, wow, Jin Air just going right for that tier two, just really trying to pressure Kube. Chase is right there. Trace is backed off in the top lane, so he's not going to be ganked anytime soon. Yeah, and Jin Air, they know, they see the situation, they say, okay, you're just going to take our tier one. We have a Sheen, we have a Nidalee heal that gives Pilot more auto attack speed, so we can actually burn through these towers faster. Oh, oh Kube. Kube got caught completely, and there's a kill for Chaser. There are two Sheens Whoops. right there. You cannot do that. He doesn't have the tankiness yet to actually make that play, so Jin Air gets a bit of a gimme in the bottom lane when it comes to uh, that kill, they did lose some HP on their mid lane turret. Crown is a big threat at the moment. Yeah. And they didn't get the tier two, but they kept Kuve down just a little bit more. Yeah, it can't be that aggressive with just the Trinity Force. Very dangerous. Yeah, so that gives Trace a little bit of time to push that top lane back up again as Kuve returns from the dead. And GBM still keeping that mid lane fairly safe for now. And Chaser with uh, both the kills on Jin Air at the moment is a, a pretty powerful Nidalee, but at what point does that start kind of hurting Jin Air? 
well, the rest of the team. Oh, I mean, as long as they can continue kiting and poking, he is going to be much more of a threat than this Gragas in the late game. And we've seen how much damage some of these spears can do once you start getting those Rod of Aegis stacks, especially since Rod of Aegis now gives more AP than it used to. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, it does become quite damaging. And, of course, the Nidalee will probably build a Luden's Echo next. So there's a lot of threat here. Yeah, Faker just going through the Wraith camp or uh, Wraith camp. Wow. Went back in time for that one through the Raptor camp. Just traveling, traveling back in time. Yeah. Magical time journey with Doa. That's right. We're going back to the age where Nivea was known. So it would not, not quite that far back. Although we did see an Anivia last season. We did? Yeah. It was Faker. It was. It Faker, was Faker pretty much just plays everything, though. He's like, he just kind of rolls the dice and is like, ah, oh, what do I play today? Mastery, okay. Twice, no less. Yep. He just has one die with all the champion portraits on them. It's massive. Pretty it's like much the size like of a baseball, and he it's, just rolls it's, it. It's basically just a golf ball <laughs> at that point, you know? And more damage onto that mid lane tier two. Have you ever seen a hundred sided die? Yes, I have. It, it you is would, you it's need, fairly close to a golf ball. You would you would need uh, more than a, more than a hundred sided die though. Yeah, you would. <laughs> hundred and twenty something sides. Yeah, twenty four I think. Current count. I don't know. I wouldn't know either. A lot. It's been upgraded to many. About two minutes until that next dragon. Junior really could use this one, but they can, uh, I suppose they can threaten Baron a bit. Yeah, they can. It's very problematic for Junior that they do not have the mi enemy mid tower down, and they probably should be looking to group on that objective uh, just so they can have some more control. I mean, even trading the next dragon for that mid turret would do a lot for their pick composition because the problem right now is they need to make picks but they can't get into the enemy jungle because that mid tower is still up so it's a bit dangerous they want to kind of take it to the next level they need samsung to be able to overextend and that means the mid turret has to die because otherwise there's a very easy place to take refuge at right dead center in the map well, again, you know, we talked about those stats with wards on uh, Samsung. Jynair, no doubt, is aware of that as well, too. So taking that mid lane turret could deny a lot of vision, could hurt that decision making for Samsung even more. Yeah, still no wards on the actual dragon itself by Jynair as we get up here into the That's a bit surprising. 45 second range. Well, I mean, they only have two ward totems in one sight stone. It's not exactly the same. And Samsung already all over the Dragon Pit, probably going to throw some of their own wards down in just a moment. Positioning themselves to take that one. I mean, we've seen Jin Air recently in the last few minutes prioritize vision over the top part of the enemy jungle. So I wonder what they're going to do with that. I mean, they could maybe make a trade onto the Hecarim. Hecarim trying to run right now. There's the Twisted Advance. Yeah, a little uh -oh. bit of damage. Chaser coming from behind. It looks like Kube's in a lot of trouble here. Sweet coming up right now as well, too. GBM staying towards the mid. They need to defend that mid lane turret. They can't give that up. Looks like they're going to give up the dragon, though, as GBM goes top. There's a gold card, and of course they're going to get the kill on Kuve, but that's another dragon. Oh, knocked right back by Sweet. <laughs> that was the I was wondering what happened there for a second. Sorry, yeah. what the hell? Uh, so now the question is can they do something about this Baron while they're a man down? They have a 30 second timer, they have some good vision around that objective. I think you just gotta go for it if you're Jyn Air right now. I guess they will. I mean, mid lane is pushing up enough that they wouldn't need to worry necessarily about that tier two turret. Everybody going towards the pit. 16 seconds left for Kube. Kalista's They're gonna bottom go for side. it. That's Even right. though Kube has TP up right now with Kalista all the way on the bottom side of the map. This was such an obvious call. Samsung yeah. really dropping the ball here. Well, here comes Samsung trying to get up to the Baron pit just in time to take it. Can they do it? Doesn't look like it. Jyn Air gets that Baron, and now they're going to go forward. Sweet takes a lot of damage, and he's going to back off. Can they get to defend that mid lane turret, though? I don't think that one's going to survive. Well, they have home guards, and they've got, looks like, it's too low well, health. They have too low health, so we'll yeah. go down. But in that situation, what poor shot calling from Samsung. You know your top laner just died. You take the dragon, you're on that side of the map, you take the blue buff, you don't go show your Kalista on the bottom side when there's still 20 seconds left on your, your top laner, even if he does have TP. Yeah. That was the world's easiest Baron for Jyn Air. Well, now they gotta make something happen with it. They are down two turrets. 
they have they still have two globals up and they have a very strong siege composition with Italy and Corky like and they're still tier one so it's basically just free money for Janair sitting there free money sounds good free gold in this case which I guess is a form of money for League of Legends yeah, their flanks aren't very well warded though, so Janera is going to back off. They finally are starting to get some of those in. They want the red buff. Uh, looks like they're just going to wait to push mid until they have a threat onto the tier twos and top and bottom. You can see they're sort of delaying their push right now. Yep. And this is Janera. Delay, delay. Play the late game. Rune and Hurricane helping Fury push the lanes pretty quick right now. TF can't push forward because they don't have deep wards inside the enemy, enemy's jungle. So, very problematic situation. Janair, they if they can't take a tier one mid off of this, especially when they see Crown in the bottom side. Yeah. Well, look at the vision too for Samsung. They know where everybody is right now. I mean, Crown absolutely should not trace. be in the bottom side either. Uh, he should be in mid because he's got the major wave clear. Yes, Callista has that hurricane, but Callista has to get him close to hit the whole wave. Yeah, not going to work. Very poor lane assignment from Samsung. Janair just going to keep pushing for the moment anyway. Going to take that tier two in top as well. So tying up the turrets overall right now. And we talked about how important getting that mid lane turret down was for Janair. It's going to really free up GBM as he pushes that bot lane back into Crown. I mean, it's not over yet, even with this 5k gold lead, because Samsung does have these powerful late game carries in Victor and Hecarim. Oh, teleport. Potentially coming in here. GBM pops it. May have just wanted to get an idea of where Crown was at. Nope. Crown knows he's screwed, so he's just going to start running around the jungle. Oh, starts yeah. to play aggressively instead. Goodbye, Victor. Crown playing too far forward without wards. Yep. This is what happens. There's the gold card. There's the kills coming in. And Pilot going to take one. His first kill of the game. Samsung is mostly losing to themselves this game, honestly. Yeah. Well, like you said, poor lane assignments, poor decision making as far as leaving that Baron open. They were holding it together in the laning phase, but their shot calling has not been on point. This is exactly what we've been talking about. Tons of wards, tons of vision, but just not really being able to make the right decisions with it. It's pretty, yep. pretty uh, classic example of exactly what we were talking about when this game was getting going. Not over for him, though, so there's that encouraging sign, at least. I mean, uh, now the Aegis is done for Eve, so that's a very important item against Janair because they are majority magic damage. I, I mean, they're almost exclusively magic damage. Yeah. Not going to save the Tier 2, though. Chaser tanking a bit. Sweet can handle it as well. And so that's three turrets taken uh, Yeah. Big. With uh, in the space of mostly that Baron buff. Yeah, uh, did very good. They got kills. They got... Three towers, they got the Baron, and that leaves them with a very, very large gold lead right now. Yeah, and they should be able to transition that into a first dragon as well, too, which will be a nice little power bump with that AP and attack damage boost. Well, they got to get the next dragon. That's yeah, that's Samsung's ticket to stay in this game. <laughs> yeah. So you need to take that last dragon. I mean, Samsung still doesn't even have dragon. a kill in this game because Janera has been playing a very evasive and a defensive style. They just refuse to fight in that 5v5. And to Janera's credit, it's worked out for them. I, I mean, if you if you know that the other team can only win through powering through in team fights and you can play the better macro game, well, sometimes you just give the more novice team the runaround and uh, it's been working. Well, why not? Will Janair claim this next dragon? It looks like they really can. Oh, knockup. So we take some decent damage. Fury comes in a little bit. They're going to be able to clear that pink ward. Samsung still has a bit of a dangerous team fight to bring against Janair. Yeah, scary. They have a it lot is. of AOE damage. So. All right. Looks like he's just going to go top. They found Kuve yet again. Kuve trying to get away with that Onslaught of Shadows. Another gold card could lock him down. Will he get there in time? There's a flash gold card from GBF Trace. Follows up with a twisted advance, and that's going to be... Oh, is it going to be a kill? It will. GBM picks it up at the last moment. Kuve has been very slippery all game long. Yeah, he's done a good job because this is a composition that meant almost certain doom for him in the top lane. So, yeah. sure, he's 0-4 and 0, and he's two-thirds of Jyn Air's kills, but he's made it very difficult. And every time Kuve dies, except for this time, because remember, there's still two teleports up for Trace and GBM, that they've actually been able to make a play and get start stacking those dragons. They got three dragons for Kuve's death, so 
It's not so bad, really. Yeah. This time around, though, Janair with the big edge, able to take that dragon and get that first dragon buff, which is really, really nice. Baron coming up in a minute as well, too. So if they can get enough wards down, they should be able to with their poke, just kind of zone Samsung right out. Yep. Uh, next Baron is going to be very problematic for Samsung. And, right. You know, I talked a little bit about uh, maybe playing Rumble earlier in this game. This same thing would have happened to Rumble uh, for Kuve. Maybe Gnar would have been the better choice, actually, just so you have some more escapability. Uh, it does limit your backline threat, but I think something like Gnar and he would probably been, have been a more preferable setup, actually. But. Luna really hasn't been able to make anything significant happen on this Janna. The most he's done is, like, shield turrets that are about to die. I mean, I don't really like Janna and Kalista together. If we talk about Kalista and you have this insane kill exactly, pressure in a yeah. 2v2. But Kalista's going to be, especially if you build like he is, which is Black Cleaver Runins, you're going to be in the middle of a team fight because you have to get that armor shred down. You're trying to hit as many targets as possible. So what what is Janna really going to do for you there? It's a pretty big anti synergy really. Yeah, I mean, even if she gets in there and monsoons everybody, she's going to put people outside of Hurricane's range. I mean, Fury basically just has to go suicidal here, yep. try and get as many uh, stacks on the Black Cleaver as possible, and Kuve can then come clean it up. Yeah, that's the plan. Kuve has a Spirit Visage now, which, of course, is uh, pretty nice. Very against nice against the composition of Janair, yep. sure. So Voice Staff now done for Chaser. He's nearly done stacking that Rod of Ages, too. So he's really hitting his prime and GBM will just be split pushing on the bottom side of the map. TP still available. Yep, he can join them at that Baron if he needs to. And he probably will need to. Looks like there's some recalls though coming in. Sweet going back. And how is Janair going to handle this advance down the mid lane from Samsung? Well, they can't really put any pressure onto the inhibitor turret. That's not going to help Samsung very much right now. They may be able to punish pilots over extension right here. Pilot on the run. Yeah, looks like Samsung, though, is just going to be content taking out some of these wards on their way out. So pilot is safe for the moment. And you're Corky, too, so you've got a decent escape. So here we go. Can Janair actually clean out this Baron right now? That should be what they're looking for. At the given time, they have to be able to take Baron to really do much of anything. But nothing so far. Sweet just slowly going to start working on that pink ward. Has a nice ring of vision around him to see if anybody's going to come stop him from doing that. Not going to be anybody, but that's the last ward that Samsung had on the Baron. Pilot's going to go back, pick up another BF sword for his Infinity Edge. And then we shall see. He needs to buy Infinity Edge, too. He can't go Bloodthirster this game. Yeah, he definitely needs the damage. Absolutely. And Samsung may get a chance to just walk back in here and take out the wards. Giving up that pink ward for free. That hurts. Yeah, very problematic. And Eve also managing to get some deep wards in. It's backed up there by Luna. So that pretty much undid a lot of the last couple of minutes that Jin Air had managed to achieve because they yeah. had so many recalls during that time. It's been bizarre. I mean, they just put wards down, then they back away, and they're like, all right, well, hopefully they won't kill them this time. But they do. They always do. And they just get a million more wards yep. around that barren pit. And so... Well, that's what we were talking about, too, where Samsung has been very, very aware of wards that they need to clear out. They do it all game long. So does Janair now, apparently. Well, this has been a very long Baron dance. Here we go again. GBM just going down to bot. They're going to try to jump onto Kuve, but Kuve is very tanky right now. I don't think there's going to be an opportunity. He's going to ult right onto GBM. Luna coming in as well. GBM on the run, not going to get hit by that Whirlwind, so there's no follow-up. Meanwhile, Baron being done right now by Janair. Teleport coming up. Trace needs to get there. GBM can teleport as well. He pops it. At the moment, I think he's going in. Eve tries to mix things up a bit. GBM coming from the side here. Baron taken <laughs> by Janair. Nice big knockup by Sweep. And now Samsung in a bit of trouble. All grouped up. Luna very, very low. They need to take out Sweet though, and they get him. That's a kill for Crown. Janair on the run right now. Luna with a good heal. They managed to take down Trace as well. 
Meanwhile, everybody recalling, so Shinair takes the Baron, but they lose everybody but their carries. Well, they messy. got a little cute right there. Obviously, they were trying to pull the surprise tactic of getting the gank down and then starting Baron at the same time. Yeah. GBM threw his gold card onto the turret, actually, oh, uh, getting some yeah. tower damage. So he That's actually did not hit Kyube. And now... Uh -oh. There are five people here. They may lose an inhibitor for this. I think it looks like they're going to. Yeah, nobody able to stop them. And just like that, Samsung charges back against the Jyn'Air with Baron and takes the center inhibitor. Wow, that is, I mean, good, good shot calling from Samsung right here. Uh, GBM just gets there a little bit later. There's a split call. They want to go after this Baron and then turn afterwards. But remember that Samsung has a lot of late game damage comparatively. So it does get a little bit dodgy. Also, GBM doesn't do much in that fight besides throw a wild card at the Baron and then get a gold card onto Luna, which doesn't really do anything. And Fury just pretty much, pretty much untouched. Yeah, GBM actually did need to get in there. Remember that he had yeah. a Zonia's Hourglass, so there wasn't actually that much threat. GBM really should have just flanked harder in that fight to put the pressure on the carries. Well, the Dragon's back up again, and Jyn Air still in that situation where they need to deny this from Samsung. They can't let them have that fourth Dragon. That gives them too much leverage over the map. But Samsung looking scary. They do still have a really strong team fight despite being 7,000 gold down. We just saw it. Yeah, well, we'll see it if... Uh, GBM actually does damage. They're going to try and split push right here again. GBM's ultimate is up. He should be well within range yep. to actually contest this. A very interesting game of chicken going on right now. Well, trying to poke with the rockets with the spears. Samsung going after the dragon. The dragon getting low. Chaser's going to have to try something. The dragon's starting to reset just a bit. GBM taking down a turret yeah, in the bot lane the in the meantime. That's right. So they may give up this dragon for an inhibitor. Dragon taken by Samsung. They get their fourth but they're gonna lose an inhibitor for it. Uh, what else? There's wow. still a Baron buff here. They may actually lose a Nexus turret too. They may lose the game out of this. Samsung barely getting away from the team, yeah. He's gonna get out, he's just gonna pour it out right now. Can he get, nope. Wow, he's Goodbye. actually, yep, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Very crafty, half of a, a Nexus turret and a half done there as well. And now they're just going back they to the They lost a Nexus turret of their own oh. to the super minions Whoops. though. So, wow. kind of an even trade in the end. I guess. Wow, that, this game is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I suppose in Jyn Air's favor, their, their inhibitor is going to be up before Samsung is. Samsung's is right now, yep. but now Samsung has four dragons, so their team fight was strong enough. With five, it's going to be even better. But the Baron's going to be up. The inhibitor is still going to be down more than likely once True. the Baron respawns in the bottom side. So there's some interesting play that can be made here, certainly by Jyn Air. Having a mid turret down at 40 minutes, or a mid inhibitor down at 40 minutes into the game isn't the end of the world. GBM is building a Giant's Belt, so it looks like he will be going for a Rylize as they want to kite. Wow, okay, well that makes not sense. Bad. I mean, again, with the AP item changes right now, Rylize does give you a bit more power than it used to, and you still get that slow, so with the TF, with those long range spells, makes sense to add a slow onto it, you know? Yeah, you can kite very nicely for yeah. the rest of your team as you head into six items. Do I think, it, yeah, actually I do think in this case it's better than a Luton Zeko. Uh, because it's going to give Pilot more time to auto-attack. It does give you the ability to brawl a bit more too, which you should never really be doing with TF, but in this case they may have to get a little bit messy in these team fights. Why does a belt turn into a scepter, by the way? <laughs> How does that work exactly, Riot? Belt scepter? Well, you, first off, you... Uh, well, you need a place to keep the scepter, I guess. Yeah, Maybe I that's what the belt is for. I think you just take the belt off and then stuff it so it becomes <laughs> long oh. as opposed to just wrapped around your waist. Okay then. I see. So so you unroll the belt yes. so it's long. I see you you're like going glue for it now. to a stick. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. You're like, you know, if I took this beautiful belt and I unrolled it and wrapped it around a staff, it would make a great <laughs> scepter. This this Rylai guy, man, he's a... <laughs> He's ahead of his time. And He's a fashion innovator, you know. Terra fashion, that's right. <laughs> well, GBM takes down a mid-tier two. And so the pressure's still mounting over Samsung here. Maybe it's detachable, so you can just turn it back into a belt, you know, depending on the occasion. Some occasions are not really scepter-carrying occasions, you know? I don't know. I think all my formal <laughs> functions are scepter-carrying occasions, Stoa. What if it's an informal function, though, you know? 
Well, you know, as king, I don't really have any of those. King Christo? <laughs> that sounds like a great sandwich, but I don't know if it sounds like reality, man. <laughs> Jenner trying to push up this top lane now. GBM still in bot. And the inhibitor for Jenner should be coming up relatively soon. Should be coming back. Bearing up in a minute 20 as well. Yeah, this, uh, this inhibitor should be quite close, but regardless, GBM still uh, turning on the heat on the bottom side. So somebody's going to have to stay back to deal with it. Kuve does have his teleport up, as do GBM and Trace, so TBs yeah. all around. But we could see just a back door here from That's the thing, from yeah. Jenner. The reality is, is that that, T, that inhibitor's back up in mid now, so the last super minion will be cleared out, and Jenner can just simply threaten the Baron, and GBM could just sit here. I mean, he's been sitting in this brush for forever. I guess that's their plan. Well, I mean, the other thing, too, is GBM can literally just TP into the base and end the game, yes, too. Yes, exactly. If, no, uh, he can totally just Sam back door. Away. Yeah. While they threaten the Baron. Well, they certainly do have the edge. Strategically at the moment. Baron in 30 seconds. Dragon in a minute 30. So that's a pretty comfortable spot of time for... Uh, Nobody Genera has seen both. GBM in a really long time right now. They have no idea that he's been standing there in that brush. We know. We know where he's been. <laughs> I mean, Chaser was just seen by a ward in the tri brush, but TF's location is a bit of a mystery right now. And they're not going to see him. Now they see his cards. So uh, okay. The I jig was, is up. I was just about to start the James Bond theme song, but. Work out. Or the, actually, the Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible theme, so that'd be Jeez. better one. Yeah, that'd be better one. <laughs> I think James Bond is okay, too. You know, if you, like, teleport in behind someone and come out and assassinate him, that's a pretty James Bond kind of thing to do. James Bond is far less sneaky. He can be sneaky sometimes. Uh, come on, the new James Bond seems much more sneaky than the old one. I don't know. I think on a scale, <laughs> the, the, the old one, scale, they're both pretty low. The old one, though, the old James Bond would, like, just... On you the know, scale. roll up in his Austin Martin and just like roll down the window and say, hi, I'm James Bond, and point a gun at you and <laughs> kill you. He's like, oh, for Queen of Country, have a bullet. Courtesy of James Bond. <laughs> On a scale of Solid Snake to, um, I don't know, <laughs> Shen in terms of sneakiness. Well, oh, GBM, this gold card. On the Kuve, GBM actually uh, showboating a little bit here. He's still taking a lot of damage. Gotta he be cannot careful. 1v1 Kuve, <laughs> but... Chaser is there. GBM. This is weird. Okay, so Luna's just going to come down to the bottom side. That was very James Bond of him. <laughs> it's like, let me show you my card, is what he says as he, uh, or here, take my card. Something like that. I'd be a bad James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> that's your, that's your uh -oh. catchphrase. That's, uh, I'd be a bad James Bond? <laughs> no, here, take my card. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I was oh, TF, Oh, Luna, sure. what? Uh oh, Spear Luna missed. could be in trouble, yeah. And GBM not getting close enough for a gold card. What is going on here? Fury comes in, hopping away, trying to catch him. Nice ult from Grog. It's GBM on the run, still in trouble. They're going to catch Chaser. That's a kill for Samsung. What is happening? Swede and Trace getting overrun as well. Pilot has no protection. He can't do anything in this fight. And Samsung is going to win this team fight and maybe the game off of this. Wow, Big Ren takes out Swede. They're going to get gonna Dragon, Dragon number five. And I mean, right uh -oh. there. Jinair got found out. The jig was up. They knew what GBM and Chaser were trying to do. So it's you know what? They just called their bluff. They're like, okay, yeah. you're just gonna be down on this bottom side. We're just gonna collapse on you with all five members of our team. I feel like Jinair really kind of outsmarted themselves. Yep. They just certainly now. did. Yeah. Like, oh, we're so tricky. <laughs> but Samsung, uh, they don't they don't abide by that kind of thing. I mean, five dragons. This base is going to go down super fast. There's yep. only one Nexus turret, and Samsung has a big edge in 5v5 uh, team fighting. It's going to be half. It's going to have to be some pretty amazing heroics here from Trace if they're going to do this. Gold card comes in onto Kube. That's not the person you need to. How are they going to get to Fury? They can't. They can't stop Fury. GBM just can't get in there and do damage. Pilot running out. They get the kill to Gragas, but the Nexus taken out so fast. And Samsung, wow, with a surprise game one, and that one's a bit embarrassing for Jinair. Uh-oh. It was kind of embarrassing for everybody, Noah. Yeah, I, I, I was embarrassed to pass that. <laughs> it was yeah. silly. That was a very silly game. Yes, it was. Uh, Jin Air, they definitely outsmarted themselves in that game. And Chaser, you know, he, he missed some pretty clutch spears. It was a nice flash from Luna right there at the end to yeah, got dodge that in. ability. But basically, there were just five Samsung members on the bottom side of the map. They just decided to box in 
GBM and Chaser, and they made it work. It was a great call from Samsung, honestly, to stop the shenanigans in the ball. Oh, <laughs> oh that sucks. Yeah. Well, picks and bans for game number two, Janair versus Samsung. And uh, we'll see if Janair can keep it together. It's an awkward situation to be in. Okay. So what will be the bans this game? Looks like the Azir coming back out against Crown. That hasn't been a big pick for Janair when GBM is playing. They are going to ban Twisted Fate. Hmm. Okay. And Fizz, surprisingly. So maybe worried about Crown's possible counter pick. They will first pick the Maokai. True. Right. Ezreal still available this game. Braum is not banned. They did not first pick the Braum. So Samsung has a very real potential just to take Gragas Braum here and then threaten the Runeblade Ezreal. Or Victor Gragas. That's what they're going to go with, it looks like. Uh, I don't know about that one. Huh. That's a very early mid lane pick for Samsung. Now, how does Jinair punish it? Well, denying the Victor is key to play against GBM because he has had some very big, big games on that victor. He's shown that he can really hard carry with that champion. Now, I don't know about what he's going to be able to do with this game in particular. Zyra may not be the answer, believe it or not. But uh, what about going for like a Juggernaut? What about going for a Lulu here? Doesn't look like they're going to. They want some more information still. No sign of the Ezreal, which is definitely an option, and no sign of the Braum. This is a little bit weird if they lock in the Alistair. You think, especially if you're going to take Maokai in Italy, you would at least want to threaten the possibility of a Rune Glaive as. Yeah. Ori. Ah, Oriana for GBM. All right. The champion that he nope. made Alistair. a name for himself on will not be picked. That's <laughs> uh, what I was going to say all along. Alistar locked in, and so two more picks over to Samsung Galaxy. What do you take here? Sivir Brahm? Avoid that Ezreal? I think you wait on the Brahm until you see if the Ezreal is going to get picked, but you, you could take it here. Uh, obviously, you know what the top lane matchup is going to be already, so you could just take top lane and AD carry and save your support for last. That's certainly a viable option. Well, if they pick a Lulu here, I was going to say, it certainly indicate a Kog'Maw, but it looks like it is just going to be Brahm and Sivir. All right. Ah, Pilot insta-locks that vein. Very bold move, but what is GBM going to play in the mid lane? Oriana, okay. Yeah, they have a good team composition for Oriana right now. It, Chaser, the Nidalee doesn't really fit into what Janera is doing because they don't have a lot of poke uh, outside of the Nidalee. Yeah, they've got a little bit of zone control with the Oriana, but mostly this is about protecting the vein of course you do get the attack speed and the heals coming in with a lot of ap so there's that angle to it but good composition for creating picks and they've got two methods to really get the ball in there via the alistair or the maokai so nice composition will be the rumble locked into the top lane we were talking about how the rumble may have worked out for Samsung last game. Still so dangerous. Maokai in Italy, we're going to see more top ganks here. And rumble even more vulnerable than the, the Hecarim, because at least the Hecarim has that ultimate. He's got his devastating charge for a little bit of movement speed. Rumble can't do much of anything if his flash is down. Very true. And Jin Air. You would think they'd be coming back into this one with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, a bit of vengeance planned here in game number two, or they're just going to roll over and die. We don't know what the level of tilt is. I checked the weather report between games, and it was cloudy with a, a chance of tilting, but it was only about 50-50, maybe like 55% chance of tilting. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, analyzing the atmosphere of the Jin Air booth. You're welcome. I saw you going in there, taking some readings. That's get, right. Gathering some data. That's right. Have my phone out, you know, with my uh, my tilt meter on it. The, like waved it in front of GBM. It was like really going off the charts there. But the salt sensor, you were just that's like that's right. <laughs> yep, detected a lot of it, but we'll see if they can control it or not. Janair, this is not the time to be too owed by Samsung. Janair, we'll see if they can stop it from happening and get the tie. Let's get in the game and find out.
Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. Junior Green Wings versus Samsung Galaxy. The Samsung fans sounding a, a bit more energized after that game one win. A surprise win. Coming out for Samsung in game number one. Well, you know, Samsung is a lot like Spenu, though. They usually can only put together one good game in a best of three. True. So, and then they... That wasn't even a good game. That was just a game that they were kind of handed at the end there. Yeah, they did a lot in the early game in terms of questionable shot calling to give Jenner a big advantage, but they had that late game edge in terms of the team fighting, and Jenner equally made mistakes. It was sort of True. a, nobody really wanted to win that last game, you have to say. I guess not. So Pilot back on Vayne. Now we saw him at the beginning of uh, the season really starting to diversify his picks with Urgot and Vayne, and it all looked rather interesting for this player, but then he got benched for a long time for Captain Jack. But he has put on some very impressive Vayne performances, whether he'll be able to play up to that level. Again, remains the, the key. He does have a lot of peel. He's got shields, he's got heals, he's got everything going for him to protect him. And we are going to see a lane swap for oh, Jenner. So they start on the bottom side of the map, then walk all the way across here to get that freeze in the top side. And Jenner just wants to swap out of that Sivir lane. And I guess Kraus wow. is going to slide around awkwardly. Nice. I didn't know you could do that. That's awesome. It's fun. Can you do that in real life, though, Dylan? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Why do you even need to ask? You just have to put some wax on your shoes. That's right. You know, I actually, when I was in uh, when I was in college, I bought what they called soap shoes back in the day, where I had they had like the the wax like section in the middle, so you could jump on rails and like grind down them with just shoes. Did you do that? Yeah, I did. It How was, was your uh, shoe rail grinding? Quite good. It was really easy, actually. Can you do that for me someday? Well, I don't have the shoes anymore. If I got you the shoes, would you do it? Sure. <laughs> Probably. Okay. I'm gonna take some videos. <laughs> All right, sounds good. I was skateboarding yesterday. Had my dog pull me. It's fun. Oh, and Luna coming in, trying for an early little gank on the GBM. There's a Q. Can they get the stun off? A little bit of damage, but no summoners used by gank by mom. Yep, does get a potion out, so that's a bit nice right now. Kube hits level two, then right back into the lane with the teleport trace with the same move on the opposite side of the map. So standard lane swap so far. Looks like Braum was just going for a mid lane gank on his very old journey up into the top lane where he eventually arrives. Yep. But that kill pressure now going to be on Sivir, and Sivir not that vulnerable to it with that spell shield. She can actually shield out the Twisted Advance or the Spear, so it's a lot harder to land that gank combo. It's a good adaptation by Samsung, and that's what they definitely need to do at this point. GBM with a little bit of a ward as he pushes up there. A little bit of a ward. It was mostly just a ward. Didn't need to really have the little bit of a ward right there. It was only half a ward. It, that's what a trinket ward is. It's just a little bit of a ward. Yeah. Not a whole ward. A bit of a ward. Half a ward. I'll take a, a pint of ward, please. It comes in pints. It does. It looks like it could fit in a beer glass, so. Sure. Uh-oh. You've been found. Yeah, Chaser waiting for a long time in the top river, but can't actually get that wave pushed back enough to be able to make a play. Instead, GBM just going to be a little bit tricky, hiding himself for the moment from Crown and staying well away of a place where the death ray could hit both him and the minion wave. He has to make a choice, and that choice will be GBM. Oh, oh that spear. Actually, it did. It did connect. Yeah. It didn't look like it did damage. That, that was odd. That was a very strange little thing. But he got the little uh, Klingon Empire symbol above his head, so I guess it did hit. So I guess he's part of the Empire right now. He has yeah. to go back to Kronos. No, he's still got to go through that trial where like, he walks on the thing and everybody like hits him with the electric sticks. Remember that one? <laughs> that was supposed to be dramatic, but man, I just laughed and laughed when I saw that scene. <laughs> I was like, Worf, you idiot. Do you really need to do this? That's actually uh, how you become a caster at OGN. Too. That's true, yeah. <laughs> That's right. We just put Papa Smithy through that. <laughs> he's going, he's like, ah! Like, he, he like fell down to his knees. We're like, get up. <laughs> you cannot be an OGN caster unless you pass the trial. <laughs> yep. So think carefully before you want to move out here. That's right. <laughs> We've accepted him into our, into our house, house OGN. <laughs> yep. Barely made it, but he survived. Good on him. 
It's actually why Chopper had to leave, too. He tried yeah. to put it off for a long time, yeah. and then he failed. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. We're like, well, there's always a place for you in Starfleet, I suppose. <laughs> back, in, back in California. That actually does work out when you think about it, yeah. A lot of damage on the Luna under the turret here. Pilot farming uh, quite well as he pushes up. Not a lot of pressure on him, too, with the support and jungle. Kind of running interference. Yeah, just by himself there, and they don't have any vision, so they're really afraid that uh, Chaser and Alistair could actually be on the top side of the map lurking, and they are right now. One of them's in the tri brush, so he does come through. He's actually going to punt him into the wall. Lots of damage going down onto Kube. Yeah, wow. A lot of damage onto Luna as well, too. Pilot. Wow, look at playing with the ranges, too, on that Winter's Bite, so not going to get hit by it. But yeah, as we just ran through the tri brush, we didn't get to see it punted Kube into the wall for some extra damage. Tons of fun. Uh, some wards going down by Dragon. We'll see if Samsung wants to actually go for that or not. Yeah, they really can't because they don't have control over mid or bottom right uh -oh, now. Oh, Chaser up go. here as well. Big gank under the bot. Nice jump onto Luna. There's first blood going over to Chaser. Can they finish off Kuve? Doesn't look like it. Pilot a little bit low there. Once again, Chaser picks up that first kill of the game. Yeah, and they had great knowledge of what was happening on that side. There couldn't have been another jungler. They had the they can still do this. right at the red button. As Absolutely. long as Pilot stays safe, and that's oh, a lot of damage geez. onto Kube. Kube flashes back in, tries to go for the flame bitter. Kube manages to stay alive for the moment. But there we go. Condemn and Chaser comes in to try to get the kill. Can't quite do it. They're just delaying the inevitable. Oh, this poor rumble. Oh, he manages to go for the two for one. Are you kidding me? Kube. And they're going to give away the dragon as well. That was oh, just boy. awful from Jin Air. They yep. were not communicating which abilities. Chaser missed two spears because the headbutt and then the uh, condemn. He wasn't anticipating them to actually land them. So they had to overcommit right there. And they gave up the two for one and the dragon. Absolutely terrible execution from Jin Air on the dive. That's right. Terrible. I've received word that the members of Jin Air have been intercepted on their Watch way out of this. Tilt City. It's okay. not been good. So there's the hole, it knocks him out of the spear. That's a kill right there if the spear lands. Then again, we come through, Pilot wants the Condemn. There it is, but they don't tell the, mem the Chaser when these abilities are coming in, or Chaser isn't asking for them, or not listening, or something, and then tries to go in way too Jeez. low. They have to burn two flashes to get double killed. That was one of the worst tower dives I have ever seen. Wow. Jenner, you go straight to your room and do not come out until we say so. I mean, they still have a gold lead, shockingly. <laughs> well, they got a kill. And Trace has been doing well on the, I mean, he did. He's got a, a lot more CS than Kuve does. You know, Kuve having to yeah. fight it out under the turret, I suppose, rather than CS. Well, also, he was denied pretty hard by the vein, whereas oh, yeah. uh, Trace had a bit of an easier time in the 1v1, and he has that better ability to farm from range as Maokai. Hmm, the support standoff in the bot lane as GBM moves over to take his blue buff. Man, that was... It's, it's been a bad, while since I've seen a tower dive. Yeah. It's just, that was such an easy gank to set up. And the most baffling thing, Doa, is that Jin Air is a Nidalee team. This is a team that should know how to set up Nidalee tower dives. This is some of the worst uh, Nidalee play from Chaser we've seen yet. Uh, yeah, it's probably the worst. It's not good. But it's very surprising that they couldn't coordinate around either the headbutt or the oh, condemn. Finds Eve. A little bit of damage onto him. I mean, what? Oh. oh, and Shockwave on the crown. GBM may find a kill here, but that Chaos Storm is doing quite a bit. GBM's going to have to back away. Doesn't need to burn any summoners, but Crown doesn't need to use his either. There's another moment where that spirit hit, and uh, probably Crown was dead. Could have been, yeah. He had Flash, so maybe not, but certainly would have discouraged Crown just a little bit right there. Drops the Chaos Storm all the same. Yeah. It's a bit rough. It's kind of scary there for a moment, guys. Monty like picked up his monitor. He was gonna he was gonna throw it into the crowd, but <laughs> but I, I stopped him at the last second. It was actually I was aiming he for the Jin Air booth. <laughs> <laughs> he gets that way when tower dives go like that. Hulks out a bit. Yeah, it's it's not pretty. No. That's right. 
have become a danger to other casters. He doesn't to be turn the audience. He doesn't turn green though. He turns plaid, sort of a <laughs> faded plaid. Yeah, it's a nice pattern, but it's still kind of disturbing. It's actually my Scottish blood, you know. It's oh, my, there you go. My my tartan. There you go. Well, people can't see what you're wearing in a desk. They don't know you wear a kilt to the <laughs> studio every day. Actually, yeah. Little known fact: Monte Cristo facts we're revealing. It's just more today. comfortable in the summer, you know. I like yeah, to you get, get a little draft. bit of air swirling around there. Oh yeah. It keeps things from getting damp. Makes sense. Nice uh, lower extremity garment analysis there. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Yeah. Fashion analysis is my, my next job after this one. Yeah. That's right. If that whole uh, team ownership thing doesn't work out, yeah. right to the fashion <laughs> industry. Just straight in there. That's right. It's a good transition. Moving laterally, they say, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to your new fashion line. I won't wear it, but, you know, I'll tell people about it. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah. It's all right. I wouldn't expect you to wear anything tasteful, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just can't please everyone. <laughs> um, well, I wonder what's going to happen around this next dragon now, because Chinair, they yeah. can still hang with it in the late game. They've got the Orianna, they have the Vayne, they have the Maokai, so you know, they, they certainly could stick with it, but it is not a good start, especially in the lane where it looked like they would have an advantage over with this Rumble, but instead, handing those couple of kills is a bit punishing. Trace still with the lead. Well, if they fight this dragon, they run the risk of just getting annihilated in a team fight by Rumble Victor. So they're really going to need to play careful. And we saw, you know, what happened last game when uh, Jenner struggled with team fighting. They did just get wrecked. So it's a bit dangerous. It's a dangerous prospect to straight up fight Samsung right now, I think, if you're Jenner. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the dragons uh, stacking has begun early for Samsung, too. So they're in a good position just to continue with that objective. They had five dragons in the last game. They can certainly repeat that performance very early on in the game again because they're going to be able to get their second here in about 13 and a half minutes. So Janir has to be able to do something about this, but they've only got 45 seconds to make a important play and trace has gone for the cowl first so he's not going to have that righteous glory to get a decent engage down mm -hmm. well, 30 seconds pilot and sweet trying to push up the lane a little bit anyway sweet pushing ahead yeah they just want to try to get that close enough to the turret that they can move over to the dragon comfortably but i don't think there's going to be too much comfortable about it uh, here comes the wave clear. They're just going to try and reverse this right now as the dragon spawns. Chaser's already there on the bottom side, though, so they're going to try and punish them for pushing forward. Yeah, Chaser coming through, but Fury just gets taken out as Chaser comes in. Very nicely done. So Sweet was able to make a play right there. Fury got close to the wave. They knew what he was doing, and it's really big. that was just a flash and a pull headbutt coming into Chaser's Spear. So that time they actually land the spear on a gank and are able to do something with it. Yeah, and they're going to start that dragon right away as well. And they should be able to get it. So already a better start dragon-wise for Jenner here in game number two, able to tie those up at about 14 minutes. And a pretty critical mistake by Fury. Absolutely huge. They were able to get that right now. We just look at this. It's going to be a flash. Yep. There we go, pull. Headbutt. And nice headbutt. Yep. Chaser coming on through there, too. So they made it work, got the necessary kill. Had to Chaser flash for that, actually. But okay. Got the damage down, and now oh, hi. they're not going to be quite as concerned as they were before about the possibility of the fifth dragon. So they're hanging in there. They have that gold lead in spite of the dive at the top side. Yep, Chaser getting a little bit low thanks to Crown. And Samsung trying to just get all the vision they can here. Just gonna pounce away. So Luna and Crown not really going to be able to close that gap in any kind of meaningful fashion. Question now is, do they go for some of these ganks on the top side to try and shut down the rumble just a little bit more? They could collapse on a sweet here. Okay, he sees it. Ping went down, but sweet backing off just in time. Yeah, he has his ultimate up, so yeah. we'll get out of there. Not too worried about that. Now blue buff transfers for both players in the mid lane, 
And back to glorious, glorious farming. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't love farming? A little bit of pressure onto this turret. And Sweet coming in. Spell Shield prevents the knockup, though. And uh, Eve just protecting the Tri Brush, so a little bit of damage done to the turret. Not much else to speak of, though. Oh, are we going to see a bit of a fight here? Damage onto Crown, a little bit more, and yeah, Crown not going to find a chance to 1v1 at the moment, anyway. Yeah, this is. Uh Really going to be a bit of a slow one from this point out. Sweet actually going with an early distortion enchantment in this game just to have his flash up more frequently. But that's not usually an item that we see onto these Alistair. So he really wants to get on top of Victor and Sivir, understanding that if their flashes are down, they're not going to have the mobility to get away from him. Yep. From that flash Q, and he's going to be able to instantly get in the back line. So interesting play. Eve is here. Chaser is here. Here we go. Yeah, Sweet coming in, and the spear doesn't hit anybody. Pilot pops that ultimate. They're going to keep, keep uh, pushing them down the line, trying to just chunk them out as much as they can. Pilot got it. Has to be careful here. Okay, he's fine. Yeah, no real way for them to turn. They had already used yeah. two ultimates, so he just gets that last shot to proc the silver bolts uh, before he backs off. And what is Samsung going to give up because of that? They could take some damage on their turret from this. Jinair. Junior seems to be doing a little bit better job this game in terms of controlling all the wards coming out of Samsung as well. Well, their vision control is much better this yeah. game than it was last game. They really fell very hard behind, on, far behind on that. And Chaser's still playing without that sight stone. So, and he's also playing without a warding totem this game. Wow. So far, so it's still relatively early. You can switch over to that upgraded it's, warding totem pretty soon. I mean, it seems like it's been more clearing wards than putting down wards of their own for Junior so far. And will they be able to get this turret? Yep, no problems there. Meanwhile, a bit of a tussle up in top lane. And so Jynair claims the first turret of the game. And already that Vayne is going to start taking down turrets very, very quickly. With the recalls, though, maybe Samsung could try something in the mid lane here. Yeah, and uh, Samsung really doesn't have a, something to answer a Vayne split push. It's a bit scary. Uh, if it is going to be coming in, GBM just gets delayed right there. Crown going to giggle about that on his way out. And we're not going to see a split push, actually. Fury and Luna just going to respond with a turret of their own. And Jenner just can't get there in time to save it. It was already too low. So that turret count going to be evened up immediately. Wow. Kube getting really low, having to burn that equalizer just for the wave clear as he makes it out of lane. Well, he's going to have it back up by the time Dragon comes through, so it's not really a big deal. He wants to get back and get another shop in. Before that objective becomes contested, Trace, does he have the Righteous Glory right now will be the major question for him, and the answer is yes. Yeah, and a Cowl besides that as well. Sweet getting close, tries to pulverize, doesn't catch anybody with him though. Looks like they're going to clear the wards about a minute until Dragon comes up. And Janair really wants to take the lead for Dragons for the first time in this series. Yeah, they could do it here. They could. have a vein that is unusually strong for this point in the game. Pilot's definitely been holding his own on that champion so far. They may attempt to break down the top side considering how low it is before they really want to commit to any kind of play around this Dragon. Trace seems to not be having a difficult time pushing Kuve out of lane at this point either. Trace has actually been playing well today. He's yeah. probably the only person on his team that we can really point to and say, wow, this guy played well in both game one and game two. He's looking pretty solid so far. And Jynair moving down towards this dragon area. They're going to have the vision. They're going to have the Rift Scuttler as well too, which is going to be really nice. So let's see how this gets set up. 13 seconds left. Chaser actually recalling right now. All right, that's a bit brave. Well, he, uh, he is going to not, he's not even going to have his Rod of Ages. So he just went back for the Blasting Wand. I guess. I mean, they're not going to really get there in time. Samsung's going to start that dragon right away. 
Will no. Jenner be able to, to uh, delay long enough? They're just poking at it right now. They're still yeah. going to be reluctant, but there they go. Yeah, they're going for it. Here comes Jenner. Sweet looking to make a big play. Can he get in there? Teleport's coming in right now from Jin Air. They're going to try for it. Samsung disengages. Pilot comes in. Oh, they're going to jump on him immediately. Pilot nearly gets taken out, but somehow, some way, escapes with the flash of the summoner heal. And Samsung, with the edge in this team fight, though, may be able to muscle their way in and take this dragon. Well, they did lose Luna, so it would be a 4v5 uh, right now. And Pilot Equalizer is, so low, is still though. available, but no other real ultimates are. Meanwhile, Shockwave is still there I mean, Pilot for Jin Air. They're pretty low. They're going for it, though. Pilot healing up with that blade very easily off the dragon, though. There's a Shockwave, and they catch Samsung majorly. The Equalizer comes down. Crown's still in a little bit of trouble, though. Jin Air doing damage. There's the flash from Kube. Can chase her, chase him down, gets him with the spear. And Trace. Are they going to dive this? Is uh, it looks like they advance are. on the crown. A lot of damage comes in. GBM with that command attack gets the kill, and this could be a prolonged ace. Luna comes back in, but it's not going to save Fury. There's the spear that lands. So Luna back alive again, but an unofficial ace for Jin Air as they take the dragon and take apart Samsung and to take the mid lane turret. Maybe even the mid lane tier two with this. Much better team fighting from Jin Air right there. They really followed up nicely. GBM still let his shockwave up, and he hit a great shockwave to open up that fight again. And then following through, the communication was there. Trace went in, GBM flashed for the victor. They were trying to draw them under the turret, but Victor died nearly instantly after that. So that was some, that was miles better. Now watch oh, yeah. this. So we do see a pilot just getting knocked around right there by the explosive cast. Bit of a misposition from him at first. Trace gets slowed up by the gravity field, but Braum is already dead here. Now watch this turnaround as they go for the dragon. Oh. Or don't. <laughs> it's actually surprising the pilot lived through that. Yeah, well, I mean, he had to burn both summoners to do it, but that combined with the invisibility from the vein alt, nobody using a sweeping lens or anything like that to spot him, so he was able to make it out. And yeah, look at that. Three pink wards on Samsung right now. I think they're going to try a little bit harder to spot the Vayne next fight because <laughs> they nearly got him. And if they had been able to kill Pilot like they intended, that would have gone very differently. I mean, that burst is huge. You can see yeah. Pilot right now very concerned. He's even going for a Negatron cloak already. He wants that QSS pretty fast here. Actually, he'll probably build a Veil uh, hmm. this game just because there's not a lot of cleansable CC that he's going to be concerned about except for Braum. Uh, concussive blows. Probably going to be true. Veil is probably going to be better here. Yeah, I mean, if you can soak a, a Q from Braum with the Veil, that kind of eliminates that danger, and that's really the biggest thing he's going to be worried about. Yeah. Meanwhile, having a Veil against uh, perhaps the first of Victor's high damage spells is that much too. more useful. You really just need to live. Yeah. And Pilot, you know, when Jinair has gotten ahead with Pilot on this vein, he really does tend to go off. He's 2-0-4 already, so this vein could be very, very dangerous for Samsung as the game keeps going here. Well, they have another large gold lead. We saw this from Jinair in the last game. 6K by, you know, 25, 30 minutes. And la like last game, maybe they can't convert it again, but they do have a better tool in terms of their team composition for actually winning a late game team fight. Oh, headbutt pulverize onto Luna. Sweet going out a little bit ahead of his team. Could be dangerous, but it looks like he'll be okay. I think the big thing for Jin Air this time is that they're not in a position. They don't have the same team that's going to allow themselves to outsmart themselves like they did last time, too. This comp is much more straightforward, which I think is good for Jin Air at the moment. It is, and it's easy to execute in a 5v5. Yeah. Maokai hits W, you click on somebody, then you, uh, Oriana hits W, then you click on Maokai, and then you press R. It's not that hard to operate. It's very reliable. You can't get overly clever with Maokai, Vayne, Oriana. No, you can't. Yeah. Well, Sweet is actually going to be the one building the Aegis of the Legion this game because Chaser, of course, wants to go for those damage items. That is his role on this team. And they're going to go for that Baron. Pretty brave. There are wards there. They're going to have to back off immediately. Yep, they have some nice sustain, though, so they don't really take damage. Just poking in, seeing if they can force Oops. Samsung. And those spears starting to do a lot of damage. They certainly are. Chaser's been landing a lot more of those this time around, too. Looks like that ward is just outside of the pink ward range. Yeah, they can't see the Baron. They're going for it again. All right. Samsung knows this is happening. Baron dropping fast. They might have to disengage again. Yep. 
Just keep on poking forward, though, clearing yep. out that vision. There's not a lot of time for Samsung to go back if they want to remain competitive, and that Italy poke is hurting given a long enough timeline. Have to defend that mid lane turret. Dragging up in a minute 30 as well now. But they can just go right back in on that Baron again. But this is a situation, too, where you could theoretically give up a second Dragon for the Baron. You could kind of let them quote unquote have it. Oh, yeah, definitely. You're not going to feel too bad about them getting Dragon number two as long as you can do that Baron quickly, which they can with the Vein. They certainly have the tankiness in order to buy themselves a little bit of time without taking too much damage from that objective. GBM, speaking of damage, just going straight up in the damage department, picking up the death cap now. And going for the Void Staff afterwards, it looks like. Yeah, Oriana spikes really hard at three to four items. So just having her core of Athenes plus death cap plus Void Staff is usually enough to make a Massive, massive difference in team fights. Very true. 30 seconds. Engineer getting ready with some wards. And this one, they may just be able to take this uncontested too. We'll see. Samsung looking a bit afraid right now. They have, wow, they have Crown all the way up in the top lane right as this dragon comes up. Yep. I, I feel so like Janair is going to be. Yeah, I feel like Janair is going to be pretty happy to give up potentially a top lane turret for this dragon, and maybe not even that. Well, they're still trying to chase. They got a free ultimate out of Fury too. They yeah. have to back off using that on the hunt, and so that means it's even more likely that Janair is going to get this. They're trying to get the top lane tier one. Trace has been sent up there. He has the TP. He's not going to save the tower. Yeah, but they do take their third dragon, which is really nice. Luna nearly getting eliminated as well too. Warding has been night and day for Janair. Their vision control was so bad in game one around a lot of these barons and dragons. This time it's really turned around. They've been buying a lot more wards, getting them out on the map. They have four pink wards, something we really didn't see at all in the last game from yeah. them. Well, Janair, I mean, I don't know why they thought they could be sloppy, but they looked a bit sloppy last game and things have, things have tightened up considerably. I can only imagine what the coach had to say. Between it's, game one and game two. It started off bad, giving up that double kill, but they haven't given up any kills since then, and they've taken some very clean dives. So right. maybe just a bit of a slow start today for the Jyn Air Green Wings before they really got on point. But Got to warm up, you know? Yeah, ever since that abysmal tower dive at the beginning of this game, they've looked a lot tighter, and they've managed to engineer a pretty healthy lead for themselves. As they did last game before they gave it all away. But, uh, well, this one's a little bit different situation. Yeah, it's going to be harder for them to give this one away because they yeah. have a better 5v5 team fight, so they don't have to be worried about trying to be fancy with split pushing. They kind of have to just stand in the equalizer and the victor alt and take their hands off the mouse and keyboard, really, at this point. Which is not outside the realm of possibility, but I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think so. I don't think so either. And they are able to get some decent poke damage down with the Italy to keep off the objectives, and looks like Pilot actually got that red buff. Yeah, which is pretty nice for a vein. Last time I heard. Last time you checked, yeah. 80 carries. You want red buff on Vayne is probably probably a pretty good one. Being able to kite, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, like it. A little bit of damage over time. Not bad. Let's start the Baron again, and they're going to keep going for it at the moment. Even Luna, all right there, and sweet. This Baron is going down TP. so fast, they're two manning it. TP coming in, is Samsung gonna make him pay? Baron does go to Jin Air, can they win the fight though? Sweet, very low equalizer, comes down. GBM very low, doesn't get out. Kuve with a kill there. Pilot taken down as well, a double kill now for Kuve. Jin Air just playing it a little bit too dangerously. Trace recalled from the bottom lane as Kuve was TPing into the fight. He wanted to get back to base before he actually TP'd in himself, so. A uh, bit of a misplay, but Jyn'Air again, they do actually get the Baron. Yeah, but what are they going to lose for it, too? Looks like they're going to lose this top lane tier 2 turret. And that's going to tie up the turrets for Samsung, so apparently, apparently this one isn't over yet. Apparently it isn't. Uh, they still have about the same lead as they had before. I guess it's going to depend on what Jyn'Air can get for this Baron or with this Baron once they actually come back to life. Very dangerous 50-50 there from Jyn'Air. Yeah. They certainly 
Off the worst end of that one. Well, Pilot's not going to be able to split push by himself like he would like to, considering he doesn't have that. And that's really too bad because nobody on the Samsung team has any armor. He can absolutely 1v1 anyone right now. And having him with that those Baron-empowered minions sure would be handy, but it's not going to happen. That yeah, would have been nice. He's still going to go to bot lane by himself for the moment. Doesn't really have much vision, but he can at least push up the lane a little bit. There is still the factor of the dragons, too, and, and Jin Air is still way ahead in that category. That is true. So they do have that going for them. So how hard can they push with this? There's not a whole lot for them to take, honestly. They have to have Chaser down at that bottom side with him for the Baron yep. Power Minions. Here we go. Oh, wow. Trace going way into the back lines on the crowd. Eve getting caught by Chaser and Pilot condemned against the wall. That could be a kill there. Pilot bounced around by the explosive cast. He's still going to get a kill, as is GBM. Nice catch by Jin Aaron. That's going to be at least a tier two in bot. Yep. There's a charge forward, take this turret immediately, and then move on through. See if they can get an in-hip turret while these death timers are still are hovering around 25, 30 seconds. They don't have a minion wave, but Trace will be able just to tank that out. Yeah, so tanky, and it looks like it's going to be at least a turret for Jinair here. Maybe the inhibitor. I think they've got time. Oh, meanwhile, Fury takes out the tier two in mid, but that's not quite equal for an inhibitor. And Jinair, there we go. That's the kind of thing you need to take with that Baron. Yep, just pushing on forward. They get that going. Cube is there just to catch the wave as it comes in. Crown back up right now, so that'll be helpful for taking out a bunch of these super minion waves, but that dragon not really going to be contestable for Samsung. Jenner just going to go back for a shop after getting all that gold. I mean, Fury did some work in the middle lane on that tier two. I don't think even if he had been there, he would have been able to stop all of those members from Jenner coming in, and indeed, they probably just would have tower dove him. Well, Samsung's going to try to get some vision around that dragon. See if they can maybe do something to defend it. It's going to be tough, though. Void Staff plus another needlessly large rod done on GBM, and we've got the Last Whisper done for Pilot as well. So he is pretty strong, not to mention Trace is incredibly tanky right now, as is Sweet for that, for that matter. So, yeah, don't think Samsung can fight this. Nope, pretty sure they can't, but especially with how much vision Jin Air has over the entirety of that bottom side jungle. Do you Here have comes to, the glory. Yeah, that's right. They're going to try to come in on the crown there, getting knocked up. Fury comes around. They pop the silver ultimate. Kube coming from the side. Can he get equalizer? Brahmal tilts nobody. GBM pushed against the wall. There's the equalizer. A lot of people are behind it. The great shockwave from GBM picks up one kill. And Pilot relatively untouched so far. Spear barely doesn't hit Eve. And Chaser's still going for it. Flashes for that kill. Another one throws a parting spear on his way out. GBM very, very low. Looks like that's all they can take out of this fight. Yeah, can they push forward to get another inhibitor, though? That's what they want to look for right now. Dragon on the exit, and they're going to be able to get it. Wave is actually right there in the front for them to use. Now that helped a lot. Pilot was actually able to sustain off that wave back up to a decent amount of health, so even Crown, not a big threat. Yeah, they need to just go get Dragon right now. They can't yeah, they end do. the game at the moment. Don't even try. They're still super minions threatening your opponent's base, so Dragon should be the first priority. Then just go ahead and recall and see if you can finish off the Baron once it respawns. That's right. GBM is having a very good game. Uh, he really has been saving his team in a lot of these team fights. Been quite good. So Dragon number four taken easily by Jenner and finally putting themselves in a situation where you really would not expect them to be able to throw it. That is... I mean, knocking on the door of that fifth dragon, having the priority over Baron with inhibitors down by the time it spawns. It's all looking very nice for the Jyn'Air Green Wings. Very true. Picking themselves back up after that questionable loss in game one and a bit of a hard early game for them. Although, in spite of that tower dive, they were always ahead of in gold in this game. So. Yeah. Yeah, and since then again, they've been pretty tight. Okay, so how long is Jenner going to be waiting for this next Baron? The proper play is definitely with a minute left. Just go ahead, push it out, get the wards in deep on the top side. They have a ton of pink wards right now already stacked up. 
to get the vision control, and they have one in the river. All right, Samsung trying to be tricky, but they get found out right away. Can't really stand against that. Uh, maybe a little bit ambitious here, threatening around the backside with the Alistair, although dive potential is there for Janair. I mean, it keeps Samsung bottled up, and it does give Janair the chance to get a lot of wards down, I suppose. And it looks like Samsung, because of those two inhibitors down, is just going to have to give up the Tier 2. Yep, they're going to give up the Tier 2, and they're likely going to give up the Baron. But this is the best possible case for Samsung. They want to back off now to clear out those super minions rather than wait much longer, but they have to defend this last inhibitor turret. So Janair doing a good job of just ratcheting up the heat on the base. Yeah before they turn and do this Baron. This is a situation that Jynair loves to be in, though. They love to be able to take these slow, grinding victories, you know? That's very true. Oh, Sweet's just hanging out in the enemy base right now. I mean, they since they don't have somebody who can split push on the side, they have their support, they should just back out and do the Baron right here. Because Oh, they're going to go oh, for wow. it. Oh, wow. Righteous glory used. They're going to try to bull rush their way in. Eve trying to make a play and up pushing GBM away. That's not what he wanted to do. Command protect. On the trace goes in. Where's the shockwave? There's the knockup. GBM not in range to pop that one, it looks like. Pilot coming in to finish off that turret. Equalizer goes down, but GBM and the rest of Janair already have too much rolling here. There's a kill coming in. Pilot grabs one chaser as well. That inhibitor is going to be a goner. GBM still hasn't even used Shockwave this fight. Yeah, just holding it right there, waiting for Samsung to overcommit. If they wanted to win that fight, they had to re-engage after the turret was down. So with that weapon up, I think it was a up good teleport. hold if they didn't need it. There's the TP. Yeah, they really just want to be merciless with this one. They want to take this game and end it. They want to go into game number three. Fury taking huge damage from GBM. A little bit of a combo there. And it looks like with Crown still 15 seconds remaining on his death timer, this one is over. Jin Air tying it up with a very convincing game number two. Some kills at the end. Pilot donates himself. But it looks like we're going to go to game three. Yes, we are. So Jynair started that game maybe not looking their best, but Trace Hills his own as a top laner, got an early CS advantage, which definitely helped their global gold total. But after that dive, it was all Jynair. They were able to put the pressure on. They were able to win the skirmishes. They played much better in the team fights this game than in the last one. Yeah, much, much better. Chaser with a great game on that in Italy. And so on that note, it's all tied up. And if Jynair can play like that, you'd think they can take game number three. But we've seen one very kind of not great from game from Jynair. We've seen one pretty good game from Jynair. Which Jynair is going to be playing game three? That's that's the question here. Well, at least they have the momentum going in. You have yeah. to say that, that they're not going to be in that same situation of being really down because they outsmarted themselves. Versus Samsung Galaxy. And Samsung back on the blue side yet again. And they're going to ban the Ezreal first. So are we going to see the same Rise, Azir, and Braum bans that we saw in the first game that Jynair has? Uh, Azrael, Rek'Sai, and Nar were the blue side bans for Samsung in game one. I don't know if you out. think that Braum is that scary. After watching Luna play at that last game, they did yeah. well in terms of dealing with it. They're going to ban the Callista instead, probably a wise plan. Uh, the Nidalee's still open, but is it is it first pick worthy? All right, Alistair take it away from Sweet. So do you go for the victor here? Uh, Samsung first pick Callista in the last game. Maybe they want to deny that uh, from GBM, and they will. So first pick victor, another GBM denial. But, I mean, they've had victor all three games now. GBM played TF and Oriana into it. And they have that chance to just last pick the TF again if they want to. Now, GBM did lose his mid lane turret and struggle making plays on the side lane as a result of game one. So maybe you don't go into that victor with the TF. Now, no Alistar for Sweet this time around. You could just go Baokai Braum. I mean, you still have the strong engage. Janair has been putting an emphasis on that champion. They picked it in the first round of the draft on both sub red and blue sides so far tonight. Thinking about it. And they're going to grab the Nidalee. Okay. Not bad. I mean, obviously, Nidalee was a pretty big help last game. It's interesting. Of course, Nidalee is a contested pick in this matchup. It's one of the very few games in Korean League of Legends where we can say that Nidalee is definitely a hot champion. Yeah. And now that could give the Braum over, which does lead to the question of what exactly Sweet will be playing. 
Well, I think you're you're right though, where the Braum from Luna just really isn't a big threat, so Jin Air doesn't really care about giving that to him. They're gonna take the Gragas and possibly this Maokai. Yep, they will take that. Okay, so the Kog'Maw comes through for Samsung. Remember that uh, Samsung has yet to lose a game on Kog'Maw this season. So they've been having a lot of success in playing Protect the Cog comps. They don't have the Azir to sort of help out with this this time. Still some nice zoning potential from Victor with the gravity field. And now Jin Air maybe going a bit all in here. They can take Annie, remember, that is still up for grabs. And with Sivir, Maokai, and Annie, they are going to have a lot of answers to the less than mobile back line that yeah. Samsung is assembled so far. They may just take the Ori again. Very reliable champion for GBM, and he did have a very solid game on it last time. I think Oriana would definitely wreck this Kog'Maw as well. I mean, TF can get into the back line, so. Yeah, TF is also good against Kog'Maw, so they may just double down on that engage. They've got every champion right now can get into the back line in some form or another. Well, they do go ahead and lock in the Twisted Fate. GBM switching over to that teleport. On the mid lane, going for the double globals yet again. And so the final two picks for Samsung here. What is it going to be? You know, I feel like Luna certainly looked stronger on that Janna in game number one than he did on Rom in game number two. Oh, man, that Hecarim again. Kube got MVP, but he was punished so hard early. Maybe that Samsung's like, well, you took the Hecarim bait in the last game, and we managed to get a bunch of dragons off of it. You have that same topside combination of Maokai, Nidalee, and TF. We know you're going to be going hard on our top laner. Let's just make it as juicy as possible, and we'll win the same way. Let's just stack those dragons, get number five, and beat you in a 5v5. Risky. It is. Just because it worked once doesn't mean it'll work again. I mean, really, it shouldn't work again, right? Well, if the execution is just a little bit better, and they don't tunnel so hard on that Hecarim pick, but... You know, Kubi did a good job of staying even in farm, even though he did have all that pressure in game number one. And that's going to be the pick. Janna, no surprise. They do need additional peel. So is it going to be Annie is the question from Annie, what, what about a Thresh? I mean, not as much big team fighting AOE potential, but you do have that pick potential. I think Annie's just better these days, especially because if you had an AD carry that needed peel, uh, it would be better here, but Sivir's going to be right in the front line, so you're not really so concerned about that. Right. Well, I'm always happy to see Annie get picked up. Yeah, yeah. Thresh, is, Thresh is, of course, that kind of pick-peel hybrid. He's, he's right. a master of many different things, but with his composition, everybody on Jin Air goes in. So there's nobody really to peel for with the box. So it's kind of pointless to have Thresh in this composition when you can have Annie instead. Annie wasn't available, maybe then you start thinking about Thresh, but Annie definitely makes a lot more sense here. True enough, and so there's our lineup for the last game in our first best of three. Jin Air has a million ways to kill you. But they do, and if we just think about how this is gonna go down, now Chaser, we, when we look at Jin Air's composition in game one, they had the Alistar, which is less reliable stun. And so basically, if they coordinate well with Chaser, which didn't really happen in the laning phase, Chaser has killed pressure in all three lanes. There's hard CC to set up a Nidalee Spear in bottom, in mid, in top lane. So it's going to be interesting to see how Samsung plays this because they really have to cover their ass here in the laning phase, or else they are going to be very, very exposed come the end of the game. So it's all about playing defensively early for Samsung, getting to a big, big point of damage, and then unloading in a team fight, in a five-man team fight later, because they will scale better than, than uh, Jyn Air will. That's right, will they scale well enough, though? Jyn Air with a pretty crucial victory here. If they can take it, same for Samsung. Let's get in the game and see who can finish off this best of three on top. Welcome again to Summoner's Rift. Samsung Galaxy. Taking on the Jyn Air Green Wings, and this is actually Sweet's first game on Annie. Oh, very yeah. interesting. We have not seen him uh, play Annie in we've seen, professional play yet. We've seen a lot of Chase Annie, though. Yes, so that's right. If I'm sure that he's learned a lot. Also, Annie, not a very complicated champion when it comes to engaging. This is why I was I kind press of... press F, I press R on the Kog'Maw, 
and then I win the fight. You got it. Don't play any. This is why I was predicting the. This is why I was guessing the Thresh, though, because he's always kind of taken that so far this season in a similar situation, but going for the any. So some deep wards coming in early on. Do you think this is something you're going to lane swap? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what Janair wants to do. Uh, a lot of the time, you wouldn't want to be in that Kog'Maw lane if you're playing Sivir. Uh, especially that poke coming out of Kog'Maw Janna that's very strong early with the Bioarcane Barrage. But maybe you sacrifice some of that pick potential. Looks like Janair does want to lane swap. Again, regardless of where they are, if they keep Annie with Sivir, they will always have kill pressure. And it's extra bad, too. Even if Annie goes into the bottom side, well, then you have to deal with a twisted advance into an Annie stunt into a spear. So there's a lot of kill pressure in these lanes and a lot that could be done with this. But it looks like it will not be called. So Kogma and Janna will be all by their lonesome. And we will see a 2v1 Ooh. in the top side. A crown actually managed to steal one of those mini raptors from GBM. What a jerk. What a jerk, stealing those Raptors. GBM still got two out of three. So I guess he's got that going for him. And the main worry is, is you know, will Jenner kind of, once again, outsmart themselves in that late game? Will they try to get a little bit too clever yeah. with how they play this? The, the two globals on Twist of Fate, okay. Well, here we go. Yeah, so they the know the chaser's Gold. coming. Actually, there was a very good position there from Luna to, to detect this, but I don't know if he can actually survive this. He has cleanse, so that's nice. Uh, they may just not go for it, too. Yeah, it looks like they are going to back off. They, they, oh, oh no. or never mind. There's a gold card, and there's a stun. Cleanse immediately used by Crown. He has to flash as well, so both summoners taken away. Yeah, very nicely done. Just trade the Annie flash for that, even if he's not going to die. Now he has to be much more cautious about pushing forward, and they've unleashed this Annie on the map, too. So you never know when the Annie's going to come back. You cannot make those plays any longer because GBM has flash advantage on you. He can always just flash gold card you, and he can then just walk up and queue you, and then you're dead. Pretty much. So nice play there from Jenner. They wanted to put turn around this lane early. Remember that it was really hard for GBM in the first game. Well, it's so important, too, for uh, TF to be able to take that early mid lane turn and not lose his as well. We saw, you know, how that hurts your ability to gank top and bottom if you have to play so far back. So Jenner responding a lot better this game to TF's needs. Yes, and we'll see how early. Remember that last game, GBM just tried to stay an item or two ahead with the teleport. He went back in about four and a half minutes for an Antone oh, and a hello. Doran's Blade. Doran's oh. Ring, rather. Chaser going on to Eve. Sweet is coming down as well, too. Eve in a lot of trouble. There's a flash gold card from GBM. They may be able to get him here. Eve taken out first blood for the third game in a row, going to Chaser. Well, made it work, and they were trying to play with fire on that top side of the map. Uh, they knew that Crown wasn't really going to be able to respond to that without any summoners. Annie was up there, TF was up there, Chaser was up there, so playing a little bit onto the weak side, and that is very handily punished. Now, Chaser going to be doing a little bit of counter jungling. Might as well. Deep wards coming in from Sweet. Yeah, Eve is certainly going to be shut down pretty hard at this point. Losing a lot of his jungle, losing a lot of time as well. And some pressure put on that top lane at the same time. Well, it's a risk to do that. Yep. Uh -oh. you, you have a Hecarim who's item dependent, and you're going into crowd control land in the top side of the map, and he's able to respond quite easily. And of course, that damage from Nidalee, you cannot underestimate that. Yeah. Pilot. Perfectly fine here, just farming by himself. Has to be a little bit careful not to pull up, or push up rather, too, too far, but he's not going to do that. Yeah, a lot of wards suddenly going down into that top side. They need Kuve to be safe, and they should be rightfully very worried about what's going on. Sweet now returning into that bottom side. As, uh, Pilot being very aggressive on the Luna here. With Sweet there, though, he can throw all the auto attacks into Luna that he wants. Yep, there's just a W wow. on Kuve. Nice poking. And they, they were trying to play a little bit more aggressively because they didn't see Annie, but Annie walked around through the tri brush and managed to make a difference. So. Sneaky. Gonna get that pink ward as well. Interesting. Trace is trying to gank the mid lane. Here? All right. He's gonna probably throw a sapling in there. Nope, just arcane smash <laughs> to delay the recall. 
Crown is like, really? You've got nothing better to do right now? Okay, I guess you don't. Well, that was actually really smart because the Arcane Smash is closer range, so he yep. still had the Sapling up for the second delay. So if you can get in there without actually taking a turret shot and just Arcane Smash him out of the recall, well, you just get a, you buy a couple more seconds that way. GBM again going back early in this game. He had that assist gold, so he does get the same build going for the Aether Wisp again. A little bit of a surprise that he wouldn't build the Sheen or start working into that, but I guess he just wants some more mobility. And here we go, gank onto Fury. Eve is there as well, too, but Fury will be the target. The gold card lands, and he is not making it out of this one. And that's going to be potentially a dragon as well for Jin Air. This is a really brutal team comp. And yeah, look at GBM. Just going to pour oh, yeah. right back into the middle lane. Chaos Storm was dropped in middle to push the minion way. But GBM not going to lose any farm, not going to lose any CS as a result of his teleport. Wow. And now Kuve has to back off as he gets chunked out in the top side. But again, look at that kill pressure. Such a smooth combination between the TF port and then the, the Valkyrie root and the spear. This is what Jyn Air should have looked like all three games tonight, but they haven't been able to have that skirmish coordination. Finally, they get their heads on straight, looking much better this game. I mean, this is worry for, worrisome going into the postseason for Jyn Air as well, too, because you, you can't afford to have even one game like that against a team, or against any team above them in the league right now. I agree. Uh, a lot of their skirmishing and their team fighting tonight has looked surprisingly sloppy, uh, not very well coordinated or communicated. And like I said, it's weird because this is a Nidalee team. Now, if Jyn Air never played Nidalee and we revert, you know, first seeing it tonight, maybe you say, okay, well, maybe they're not used to playing with this champion. But we know that they have a heavy emphasis on this champion. They play more Nidalee than just about anybody in this league. So for them to make such fundamental errors when it comes to executing Nidalee ganks is a very worrying sign. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you kind of want to chalk it up to just being an off game this time, right? You'd, you'd like to. I'd like to. Junior fans would like to. We'd they, all like to. Well, they have looked a lot tighter in this one. So, yeah. And it's gotten them a nice gold lead so far. Chaser is rolling. When Chaser gets rolling, usually Jyn Air can win. And to the to their credit, too, I mean, they had that very embarrassing loss in game one, and they didn't let it affect them. They came back ten times stronger in game two. Yep. Didn't even let the uh, little boo-boo that they made in the beginning of game two affect them that much. They yeah. played a very dominating game ever from that point forward. So we'll see if they could do it again. GBM going to be waiting just a little bit right now before he can get another global up. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, at least Jyn Air seems mentally resilient to their own mistakes, which is nice to see. Here we go. GBM not really falling behind in terms of his farm this game compared to game number one where he played this matchup and had a bit of trouble. But he's also had a nice amount of health. Ooh. That early gank really made a big difference. Chaser and Sweet kind of playing with fire there, taking out that ward. Nice spear, though, comes in from Chaser. Yep, just going to punish them as much as they can for that pink ward destruction. While Pilot and Fury trading a little bit. Fury with the upper hand in this matchup right now, and this is how it's going to be. Sivir just has a hard time dealing with Kog'Maw's poke from the range, and especially now that he has that extra little bit of movement speed from the Phage. Not really going to be able to get into range unless he wants to ult Miss Spear. Ooh. Tough one, though. Oh, yeah. Very hard spare. Not likely to land that one. Yeah. But as a result, there is no follow-up damage. Yeah, it was one of those, you know, well, th I'll throw it, and if it hits, I'll go in. But didn't do it. GBM's just sustaining with that blue card. And Jin Air, too, just in... The last game and then this game as well, doing a, a much better job of controlling vision on both sides of the map around the river. Yep. Close one. Attempted steal right there, but Chaser gets it in the end with the Nidalee Spear. Now right over to the red buff. So where is the next gank going to be? TP almost back up for GPM right now. Needs to start thinking about planning for his next play. Trace. They could dive it. Kuve only right now has that phage, and looks like Jyn Air gonna get some free time with the tower down on the bottom side, tier one. A nice amount of damage done to Samsung's bottom turret. And will we see that dive on the Kuve? I, I don't know. He's back up to full health again. Well, the nice thing in this game is that they have, again, that more kill pressure on the bottom lane, so they don't have to always gank topside. 
they can actually have a bit more freedom in who they go after on the bottom side of the map. Therefore, they don't have to give up as many dragons as they did for those top lane ganks in yep. the first match of the evening. Chaser's coming down for a lane gank here. Will he be seen? Well, you notice what Eve is doing right now. You see where he's standing and putting down wards. He's just trying to make sure that TF can't get down oh, there. Oh, there's the flash shivers on the Luna. He gets taken out immediately. Yep. That was a very dead Janna. Well, great cut, great, uh, great uh, communication again. They nail it. I mean, you see instantly, as soon as the flash goes down, that's when all the hunt goes down. That's when the spear is already in the air. So, really nice gank from yeah. Janair. And meanwhile, Crown is back in base. GBM pushing up mid lane. First dragon goes to Janair. There's almost no counterplay to that, too. I mean, it just happens so fast. And yeah, Luna, what do you do? Luna tried to get his Monsoon off, but basically that's all he could do. And he was still at the Ignite on him. A very difficult situation to deal with. And now they're going to try and punish. I mean, remember, GBM could be here at any moment. Sweet is there. Sweet has no flash. So it is a little oh, bit harder. He's really here we far go. up. Sweet coming in. There's a TP coming in. Q Sun lands, gets cleansed. GBM flashes for the gold card. A lot of damage on the crown. Getting low, but they're going to turn it around. Nice draw. I saw Sweet under turret. Crown gets a kill. And Jin Air on the run. They didn't count on Eve and Luna to be there. Well, I, I mean, a little bit of a danger when you don't have any vision on the bottom side of the map <laughs> that that could happen. Yep. But. Uh, Crown turned it around very nicely, had that cleanse on his way through, but just in terms of predicting that that was going to happen again, Chaser didn't land the spear there. Yeah, I mean, it was yet another gank where the damage was just out of range, where if that spear had landed... I don't think GBM should have flashed for have that. I think you yeah. get the summoner spells, and if you're not already on the same page about diving that turret, if you haven't pre-planned that in terms of your communication, you just have to back off. You just have to be happy with getting two summoners out of that. Don't give them any opportunity. You cannot dive when you don't know where their support and jungle are. I mean, and this is kind of what we saw in game number one a little bit too, where we saw GBM and Jin Air maybe trying a little bit too hard with this TF. Oops. I knew that one was coming. So that top turret's going to go down in favor of Jin Air in a moment. Jin Air is still with a healthy gold lead. Yep. As they have had every game. As they have for what had it's worth. Every <laughs> game. You speak the truth, sir. I know. Crown is a happy guy. Oh, wow, nice. He's laughing it up. That turret is nearly dead. Yeah, very close to going down. So the Silver Wave Clear doing work. And Sweet and Pilot have had that freedom to push forward with relative impunity. Yeah, they'll be able to take that turret probably on this wave here. Yeah, you see Kogma just significantly slower at clearing that one out, and they're just going to give the gold over. Split between Pilot and Sweet. Helps out quite a bit. And plenty of time until the next dragon comes up, too, so Shinera can kind of just work on getting a bit more vision into the bottom jungle now and pushing up that mid lane. Yeah, I'm wondering when Kube is actually going to hit this power spike right now because they will have a two Trinity forces pretty soon. True, oh, gold card, crown little drip. There we go. Yeah, spear landed there. Didn't even have time to describe it all. I mean, that's what happens when Nidalee hits. And this is just such a field day for Chaser. Being able to gank any lane, any time, at guaranteed Spears land as Italy is just the dream. Yeah, and they're going to get a lot of damage done on the turret, too. Wow, explosive cask used by Eve, and it's going to barely save their turret. But no, there's nobody to defend against Pilot in the bottom side right <laughs> now, so uh, they have to commit that Kog'Maw to the mid lane, but they just don't have the wave clear with the Victor dead to account for all fronts. They're going to lose some minions on the bottom side, no question. And now, looks like GBM is going to finish it off. There's no way for Samsung to defend. The wave clear on all lanes right now from Janair is just making it easy to rack up objective kills. And now there's 6,000 gold ahead at 15 minutes. Yeah, pretty decisive lead for Janair right now. Starting to look like their game against IM, second game anyway. Oh, Zivrel used. Here comes Hecarim with the teleport. Teleport used by Jin Air as well, too. Kube just not tanky right now. Luna with a long ult. They catch Crown, though. There's a the knockup. Trace still wading back into the back lines of his enemy. Pilot caught in the Chaos Storm, actually. A lot of damage comes in. There's a kill for Trace. Two kills. Pilot picks one up as well. And Luna in a lot of trouble. There's GBM. 
kills very evenly spread across Jynair right now. And now the question is, where are they going next? Looks like they're not going to actually dive Kog'Maw in the bottom lane. Maybe they want to go for this Baron instead. They know, well, Baron's not even up. Yeah. Excuse me, it's, it's only 15 early, minutes man. in this game. They can just go for this tier two in mid and they can probably take it out fairly comfortably. Yeah, so just turning the minion wave. <laughs> You know, with uh, that level of team fighting, I expected it to be after 20 minutes, but we've seen a lot of action so far. Yeah. And just an early tier two, so now that gold lead pretty going to be pretty insurmountable, you'd have to believe. Yeah, 8,000 gold at 16 minutes is not something a lot of teams come back from. That's for sure. Well, I mean, Kuve, bit of a desperation flank right there. Doesn't even, wow, Chase are going to get the red buff too didn't even have the Trinity Force yet and is still trying to pull off that kind of flank. Meanwhile, Trace just a million times more useful with the Righteous Glory and playing Maokai early. So, a bit problematic for Samsung. Just no Trinity Force on either Cog or the Hecarim. Not the time you want to fight. You just want to wait until the late game instead of falling even further behind. Uh, Jynair can close this one out. Pretty leisurely. I mean, Chaser has 2,500 more gold than Eve at 17 minutes into this game. Well, you're in a situation where even the support on the other side has about 1,000 more gold than yours. So yeah, the light, the lead is it's pretty big. And again, like I mentioned, very evenly distributed across Jynair as well, too. So it's not really get being funneled too much into one role. Oh, it's been some nice team play that we've seen from Jynair to get this lead this game. They look much cleaner on the map. Now they're just going to go ahead and take their second dragon. Only Nidalee and Annie needed for this. Pilot just going to come up for a couple of auto attacks. There we go. Thanks for the help. Easy as can be. Yep. TBM hiding up in top lane. He's started to do a bit of split pushing now. Yeah, he's got a lot of damage, has that easily large rod. We'll see which item he ends up going into next. And Kuve uh -oh. still, uh oh. They're going to dive this Kuve here. Kuve trying to get away. Trace comes in with the twisted advance, gets behind him, knocks him forward a little bit, but I don't think they're going to be able to catch him. They're going to be content with the pressure on lane, I suppose. Oh. Well, they saw this five man stack right here. Sweet waiting in the wings with his Tibbers. He is seen by a pink ward right by the blue buff, though, so he's not going to be entering unseen. They're pinging Fury to take the bottom tier one, and he's gonna try. He doesn't have the greatest wave clear, but might be able to get some decent damage done on it. Yeah, nope, G not anymore. <laughs> well, GBM is on his way there already, and he can't, he has to be very worried about extending too far lest he get taken out by GBM. Oh, Sweet is gate. really playing dangerously. That's right, looks like he'll be able to get out. GBM just using that gate just to make sure that People were afraid of him. Didn't go quite as hard on the sweep that way. And I mean, the map is Jynair's right now. I mean, the jungle camps have got the vision. For once, we don't see a lot of Samsung wards strewn about the map. Yeah, the de denial certainly much better this game. And we've seen those sweepers on a couple of champions. So Jynair shying away from the early upgraded ward totems. Holding off on those for just a little bit longer. Can we get the blue? Jeez, that's already a lot of damage from a jungler just from a single spear. And now it's like Jynair want this Whoa. one. Crown and take a nice chunk. Yep, looks like we're going to be able to take oh. it. Oh, nice. Crown able to grab it with the death ray. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit sloppy right there. Obviously, Chaser did not have his smite, and but they hand it over to the victor, unfortunately for Jynair, But they, no one has eyes on Baron right now. Baron about to spawn, but 9,000 gold lead by the time Baron spawns. They can basically just bait this forever right now. Samsung is going to have to face check it. There's no question. I'd imagine that's probably what we're going to see them do. Samsung did get a bunch of wards down in there, top jungle at least. Yeah, Pilot's going to be doing huge damage this game. There's no armor. I mean, both to him and GBM, there's no magic resist either. So GBM going to get the blue buff recall, pick up Azonia's Hourglass. Now he can just engage for free onto the back line. So this is looking very, very good for Jynair. True enough. 
Yeah, and what do you do if you're Fury? I mean, yeah, you're going to be doing some decent damage too, but who's going to save you when Genera comes in? No. You, there are eight people in this game to get on to you. Even though there are only five players on the other team, that's what it feels like to be Kog'Ma in this situation. Pretty much. Nearly double the enemy team. Okay, so are we going to see the start of a Baron here? The tankiness is in the bottom lane, though, for Jyn Aeris, so they probably have to take more damage than they would like. They don't have something like an Alistair this game to face tank the Baron as effectively. They have to rely on more healing from the Nidalee. Here we go. Ah, uh, yep, Kuve, they're going to try to pick up a kill onto him. Trace and GBM going to be able to secure this one. Probably, yep, GBM gets it in the end. Pretty easy gank for Jyn Aer. The rest of Samsung up in top lane. And again, the weird thing about the teleport TF is that there's still no chance. I mean, normally a normal shot calling you'd say Samsung would be like, oh, everyone to the Baron now, because there's only one teleport. Maybe you can get uh, a four before or something without one of their major so damage sources there, but you just can't get that because TF and Maokai have the ports. So now you're dealing with an even more powerful split push with one fewer person. Yeah. So it's really annoying to have the TF TP. And they're going to be content just to take that tier two and then back off. Janair playing this much more safely than they did in game number one with the, that TF, and also much more deliberately, too. You know, there's not a lot of milling about. Well, they're in a must win situation, obviously. Yeah. They really would like to go to the playoffs. They want to ca close the gap with Najin. This is a great way to do it, to start off in this series. Uh, they could have gotten that 2-0, made the point differential a little less severe. It really does hurt, too, because they're four points down to Najin in the standings right now, and they really could have used the 2-0. Yep. It's going to make it tougher, even if they will tie in match score with a win over Samsung here. So here we go, back to some nice ward clearing prior to the dragon spawn. I need to see a little bit of a recall here from Jyn'Air before they actually go for that objective. Yeah, they've got time to do it. No real issues there. Yes, they do. Well, should be pretty by the book here from Jyn'Air. The we only thing that is keeping Samsung from getting perfect gamed is that single kill onto Crown from the overextension in the mid lane by Jyn'Air. Yep. Otherwise, no turrets. No towers, no nothing. No hope. No hope. 10K down at 23 minutes. Yeah, that's pretty much no hope. You know, I feel like we could combine this Hecarim skin with like a Mad Max thing, you know, instead of having it be a centaur, just have the back half be the truck and have the front half be the guy with the guitar that's like hanging from it. <laughs> that would be a sick skin, man. That actually would be really cool. His Q could be just him like spinning around with a flamethrower. Trucker rim? Yeah, trucker rim, there we go. That group could use some more creative, room. creative uh, skins. He doesn't always have to be a horse. Yeah, it's true. He can be anything. He can be anything with four wheels or four legs. Four legs and two arms in the front. Literally anything that has that kind of thing. Which is pretty much just a centaur, really, when you think about it. He could be like a lobster, maybe. Like a uh, deep sea Hecarim, he could be like, you just be you're a lot just, you're of, fitting he could the, hold a trident. Yeah, you're fitting the, the theme right now. Yeah, exactly. The Bilgewater theme. Pretty much. Just be, the back half is just a crab. Heck of lobster. <laughs> Giant enemy Crabberim. Crabberim. We need that. <laughs> That's right. Crustacea rim. All right, is the Baron actually going to come through this time? I mean, they can basically just do that same gank over and over and over again as long as Jyn Air has Destiny up and they don't have to use TP. You ever wonder if one of the skin ideas we talk about they're actually planning and then like, oh, we gotta cancel this one. Teleport coming in. They're gonna try to go on to Chaser here. There's the ult used by Kube. Can they catch him? Doesn't look like it. Sivir all pop. GBM could be coming in from the side, comes in from behind instead for safety's sake. Tipper's already used. Yeah, it was a nice attempt by Samsung to get Chaser all on his own, but he has the sustain, so now he's just going to simply spam those heals, get himself right back up when it comes to his oh, HP. This advance on to Eve, still low health ready, flashes out of that spear. Sweet needs to load up that stun. 
There's a knock up on the trace, could get dangerous here. Goes into the Wolf Camp, Pilot still there. GBM loading up that gold card. Wow, they do manage to take out Trace. Jin Air just overextending a bit too far. Yeah, they are 10K up and they lost that fight. They were really uncoordinated in how they responded to Kuve's teleport because uh, GBM used his gate to get into the back the back line just to be protected instead of actually trying to make a play onto any one of their carries. So he was really a non-factor in that fight. Yeah, very true. What's Samsung gonna get out of it though? Nothing, Doha. They don't the wave really... clear is still alive. Yeah. There's no dragon up. They can't. They certainly can't try and take Baron safely. So the best they can do is just push some minion waves. So in the end, not really going to have that big of an effect. And here we go. Oh no, we're not going to go onto the Baron quite here yet. We, just trying to throw go. some spears out. And now we're going to start the Baron. Okay. Well, Kuve's teleport is not up, so he's going to have a hard time getting there on the bottom side of the map. Janair's going to be very low from this Baron, though. This could be dangerous. That Baron is not going down fast. Here comes Fury. A ton of damage on the Sweet Crown gets the kill already. Trace trying to prevent E from coming in. Italy gets the Baron, but GBM and the rest of Janair getting destroyed by Crown. He takes a triple kill, and Trace can't do anything here. Ult from Luna keeps him away. GBM, the only one left as Trace goes down here. Crown with a Quadra kill, and goodbye GBM as Kuve finishes the ace. Wow, Jin Air. That is the third time in this series Jin Air has taken a 50-50 Baron and decided that that was okay. They are so squishy. Remember yep. that Samsung has really good late game scaling and they have the Kogma and most importantly, they have the Victor who has a ridiculous amount of AOE damage after they get shredded. So now they're going to start losing out of turrets. Yep. That gold lead is going to close to only about 7k. Now, fortunately for Jin Air, they still have a big dragon advantage, so it probably doesn't matter that much. But Jin Air, they had a chance to turn here, and they just didn't take it. Well, I guess you really can't underestimate Jin Air's ability to take it, a one game and there's, out the window. There's no reason to continue onto that Baron to get stuck in a pit when you give Victor a Quadra or whatever it ended up being. Because you have an opportunity to turn. Sure, they didn't have Flash onto Maokai or onto Annie, but they still have the Twisted Advance available to try and make a play there. Now they just end up with no Baron buffs and a smaller lead. But they're still, they still can get Dragon number four. They can. At this point, though, Crown is extremely strong after that unofficial quadra in that last team fight. Yeah, that is, that is not what you want to see, yeah. especially because there's no Aegis of the Legion onto Jyn Air. It's <laughs> a good point. I mean, that and, like, where is the sustained damage going to come from really in a team fight? Sivir is so short range, it's going to be tough to stand up against a Hecarim and a Victor. And there goes another turret. And if you're Jyn Air, all you had to do there is start setting up picks. Oh, explosive cast uh, dodged by Trace. Not a good cast, but you just set up the picks. You have that skirmishing potential. GBM now going to try and push into the mid lane. How long can they delay people here is the question. He's going to try to be a hero, and he is going to get some decent inhibitor damage done, it looks like, or inhibitor turret damage done, rather. Yeah, get a little bit down. Yep. Not too bad. Has to run once Crown gets back to base. So, but that sets them up for a dragon, right? It's going to take them a little bit to push sure. out the wave again and try and get control. Crown's going to go there with the death ray, start to move it, but you know, by the time he gets over to the dragon, it's going to be very close to spawning. Well, they're going to get spotted in that brush. Spear doesn't hit anybody. No wards for Jyn Air, so they're kind of just throwing skill shots into the darkness there. There we go. And here comes the dragon, Jyn Air really needs this one to go their way. They really cannot afford to lose a team fight here. Now, Jyn Air can just stall this out. They're gonna have uh, side wave control. They already have a big wave developing in the top side. They do not have to go for this immediately. Uh, they can rather just keep on split pushing and force it. Force, they have the poke with uh, Nidalee and Sivir. So GBM can just walk it. This is the correct call. Yeah. For sure, because if you don't do this, then you run the risk of Samsung actually just running into the mid lane. 
So Samsung has the, the TP, but Jin Air knows there aren't that many wards behind them. Here comes the TP, though. Oh, that's Hecarim. right. They're going to try to come in with the flank here. Trace pops out right to Sclory. Sweet. Force him away with the stun. They could be grouped up. They were grouped up. That's a big timber stun. He nearly goes down. Trace on the back lines now. GBM hammering away at Kuvia. Turns around with that onslaught of shadows, but no follow-up from Samsung. All grouped up yet again, and that's a lot of damage coming in from Pilot and Jin Air is going to be able to take this fight. Pilot trying to finish off Fury here, and he'll be able to do it with the help of a spear from Chaser. Double kill for GBM at the end of all that. And GBM That's going to be an inhibitor. Teleporting back into the minion wave that he set up. That was actually really nicely done by Jin Air. That's the kind of fight you want to see with this composition. Much as cleaner. soon as Kuve comes in, they start kiting out. Sweet did an awesome job of zoning out the Hecarim on the outside. And then the Tibbers. You Tibbers the rest of the members. You know it's a four people are just isolated. Kuve split off on the flank. And then GBM comes in with the Destiny and gates into the middle of your team to continue putting down damage and make that play. And then he's able to teleport back to the minion wave he just pushed up to clean up. So that was really well done. And that's what's so confusing about Jin Air tonight, is they have oscillated between incompetence and brilliance in a very rapid succession. Within minutes of each other. Yeah. So what we can learn is that we have yet another extremely inconsistent team. Well, it's just weird because they that was great. That was really well done. But will they play like that five minutes from now? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they got their 10K gold lead back, Doha. They got Dragon number four. They're going to be in position, more than likely, we can say, for this next Baron. You'd think so? I guess you could just describe it as heavy turbulence. <laughs> it's true. Bit, bit of the old up and down for Jin Air. I guess so. <laughs> Bounced around a bit. So and they've trying caught... To, uh, trying to catch Trace right there. But yeah, that's... but has Trace caught you? GBM uses that gate. Will he come in? Oh, Sweet geez. with another great Tibber stun. There's a the follow-up Trace coming in. GBM with the gold card on to Eve. They're going to do a lot of damage. Trace pushed out by the ult from Luna. Kube able to zone Jin Air a little bit. GBM, though, with the first kill. Trace still causing a lot of damage. There's one for Chaser as he takes some pretty heavy turret damage, but they're going to be able to kill that turret. Gold card again on to Eve, and there's a long-range kill from GBM. This is all right before Baron's about to come up as well. Uh, yeah, very nice finisher there, and they're yes. just going to go back right now. Trace is low, Sweet is low, but they have the TP, and they're going to be there by the time the Baron spawns, and they're actually just going to TP straight into the bottom side. I guess so. Hello. Yeah, I think they just want to, do they actually want to end now? They just want the inhibitors. Yeah, take the inhibitors, take yeah. the quick way out. They're going to get inhibitor number two right now in top, and then they're going to fall back right to the Baron. Uh, now, even Crown should maybe be there by the time they take it out. Could be. Sweet having to recall. He's very low health right now. So this Baron is still going to be a little bit risky. And with the death timers being where they are, do you really, do you need to go for this? Oh, well, you can wait it out, too. They have to yeah. clean out the bottom side wave. I feel like you just kind of wait it out and then go for that fifth dragon, you know? Uh, I mean... They're going to go for it. All right. You can force this. So. Baron's going to go down as much quicker than turn. last time. Oh, they may not need to turn. Baron getting very, very low. They are turning anyway. Now turning back into the dragon, the double turn. And here we go. Eve coming in. Kuve from the side. Not really finding the best flank, though, as Sweet gets very, very low. Crown doing a lot of damage, though. There's a kill for Kogma. Sweet able to pick one up for himself. Even the rest of them very, very low. Fury on the run. Trace has done so much work. He's so tanky. They're finally catching Crown. There's a kill for Pilot. GBM looking for something from the side. Flash gold card. Beautiful. Nice kill. Great jump over the wall, and GBM just going to teleport right into the bottom lane. Help finish off that Nexus turret, and that is it. With a clean ace, Jin Air will finish a not-so-clean series, but still get the win anyway. 2-1 over Samsung Galaxy. There's GG. And wow, GBM really showed up on the TF in oh, that man. game. He had some beautiful cleanup maneuvers in those fights, absolutely helping his team secure the win, taking out even more kills so they could stack some objectives. Game one, a quite shaky, outsmarting themselves, but they delivered with the Teleport TF in that third game for sure. Yeah, a very good game. 8-1-10 at the end of that for Gank by Mom.
Certainly makes up for a bit of a shaky game one on Twisted Fate. Yep, and they had uh, nicer ganks that game too. Uh, it was, it was uh, they had they had a bit of a misplay there at the bare end, but they had such an advantage that it proved not too relevant. Yeah. And Janair will take the win. That's right. Well, that one was a bit.